It is week four of the KHSAA high school football season. Tonight, the homestanding John Harden Bulldogs and head coach Doug Preston at two and one will welcome in crosstown rivals, the Central Harden Bruins. Tim Mattingly leads his team in here at three and zero, and so we're looking forward to a really good matchup of two really solid football teams tonight. This is Paul Gray here. I'll be bringing you the action tonight. Alongside me is my good friend Tony Menendez. Tony and I coached football together, and so we've had a lot of time watching film and enjoying football together. It's going to be a great night tonight, Tony. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Central Harden offense and what we can expect to see tonight. Well, the offense has been hitting pretty well for the most part for the first three weeks of the season. Um, they put up a, quite a bit of points, but I think we have some uh, changes maybe coming up due to uh, injuries on the Central Harden side that could make other players have to step up their game if we're hoping to see a win from Central this week. Other guys are going to need to pull off uh, some more workload due to the injuries. So in particular, uh, the big injury that uh, Tony is uh, referencing here is number two, Trayvon Williams. Trayvon Williams, through three games, is the leading receiver for this Central Harden team. He's the second leading rusher for this Central Harden team. Uh, and I believe he is one of the leading tacklers on the Central Harden team as well. And so a lot of production is, is Tony mentioned that uh, the Central Harden Bruins are going to be missing probably the most explosive player on that offensive side of the ball. So where is it going to come from, Tony? I don't know. I mean, we're running a wing T offense. I mean, you look at the tight ends maybe stepping up in the receiving game that we haven't seen that bigger production out of them yet, but maybe they'll start working them in more. Um, Mason Thompson, who's been putting up some decent yards, maybe he's going to get more touches or more looks, um, maybe move him around some, see what he can do with the ball. Um, in that absence, lean heavier on the quarterback in the game. See if uh, see if Zach Spurrier can do do some stuff for him. You know, drop him back. Maybe we'll see some more of the out of the shotgun in this game instead of just under the center with uh, the changes going on. Or maybe we'll see more Smash Mouth since they don't have that threat of uh, Trey being out there. So as Tony mentioned, uh, obviously Zach Spurrier has given this offense as the quarterback, uh, as sophomore quarterback a little bit more uh, balance to their attack. The tight ends, I'd be referencing Adam Hobbs, maybe even Braden Robbins who will play wing and tight end uh, a little bit as well. Uh, Terry Brooks, number nine, has been uh, both a receiving and running threat. He scored a couple touchdowns in that Butler game. And so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking to see where that production is going to come from uh, as the uh, loss of uh, Trayvon Williams will be felt, uh, again, most on that offensive side of the ball now on the other offensive side, John Harden, Keandre Strand has been nothing but short of special. Through three games, he has 795 yards rushing. That's 265 yards a game. So the production for Keandre Strand, number 28 for the Bulldogs, has been amazing. Uh, now, that matchup tonight against this Central Harden defense should be something really special to see. Again, through the three games at this point, the Central Harden defense has only allowed 19 points uh, and not much in the way of rushing yards. Uh, they have been uh, doing a good job stopping the run, and so this Central Harden defense has its work cut out for them against Keandre Strand, but uh, certainly this is going to be his stiffest test to date. Yeah, I think Central Harden's been known for always having kind of big lines, both on offensive line and defensive line, and having some meet up front, uh, being able to stop the run. But they haven't really had a face, maybe a running back of this caliber um, at this stage of a season. So we'll see if they can cause penetration enough so that he can't outskirt and get to the outside and make some big plays. I mean, most of his big yardage has been from breakaways, getting like big chunks at a time because he's like broken past that first line of defense and like kind of moving his way into the next stage. So, yeah, absolutely. He. Uh, uh Penetration to create havoc in the backfield against this swing T uh, attack, uh, and just also playing your uh, playing your rules, playing your reads, uh, doing the right things defensively. That's going to be really important for this central defense against Keandre Strand. Uh, you mentioned some of the big guys: uh, Andrew Hobbs, AJ Orton, Brock Burton, Tyler Caudill, Clayton Hockman, Seth Sarah for the Bruins, and Tucker Walters on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, a couple of big, uh, big, big fellas. It'll be really important for the John Harden Bulldogs 
uh, 53, Solomon Bennett defensively, 70, Nathan Masenii, number 52, Devontae Yates, and then the big tight end uh, and defensive end for the for the Bulldogs, number 32, Kendall Bryce. So it's going to be a good matchup of, of the big kids yeah, uh, I mean, up front. You got a 6'5 guy coming out of uh, to catch passes. That's a tough tough thing for uh, a lot of guys to be able to pick that up, especially with those mismatches with the outside linebacker. If he doesn't match up in size, what are you going to do, bring up a safety? I know, Tony, we always struggled when we got when we got our safety matched up on a big tight end. That was a really tough matchup. And you see all across the NFL that they really have gone to that tight end uh, so much in those circumstances because the matchups can be a nightmare yeah, you're for that, that skinny defense. Post route, you have a hard time covering it when you got a smaller safety against that big Absolutely. guy. Just throw it up there, let him catch the ball over the top. Absolutely. So we've got a close matchup tonight. And when you've got a close matchup like this, Tony, what are some of the factors that we can look for to see maybe w that will determine this ball game tonight? Well, I know one factor that's not going to hamper either team, which is great, is the weather is perfect. <laughs> it's a perfect football weather. No wind, no, no rain, no excuses. This is just going to be you got to play your game. Um, yeah. I think special teams could be maybe the biggest mm. factor in this game. Um, one of the injuries we haven't talked about is they are missing their kicker for Central. And that could be a big deal. Case Van Blyenberg, I believe, uh, was injured in a soccer game uh, this week. So uh, it'll be Tucker Walters kicking off. And we don't know. Uh, so the nose tackle kicking off for the Bruins here. We're about ready to get underway. And Tucker Walters is over the ball, ready to kick uh, the nose tackle for the Bruins. And we don't know what they'll do on the extra point. They may go for two with their uh, muddle huddle look, that swinging gate uh, kind of spread all over the field. Look, so we may be seeing Central if they can get the ball in the end zone uh, going for two without Case Van Blyenberg. So we're about ready to get underway. Walters is going to kick it away. He's going to kick a little ground ball, try to make it hard for the Bulldogs to field. Nice move there, number three, and that's uh, Isaiah Lee with the ball. And he'll get a short return, maybe five or six yards, but great field position for the Bulldogs starting at their own 44-yard line. Yeah, it looks like they just scuttlebutted that kick just to <laughs> – <laughs> Try to do their best with what they got. I'm not sure if he's got a leg to kick it downfield, but I guess we'll see as the game progresses and see what happens with that. Absolutely. Tucker is probably just going to be squib kicking the thing, trying to make it hard to handle. And uh, that one uh, actually kind of right to the John Harden up back. So John Harden will take over first and 10 left hash from their own 44-yard uh, line. It looks like they'll be in a double wing tight end left set wide receiver. Number 24, Bruce Mills out to the right. Strand will be the right wing back there in the set, I believe. It's a 4-4 look, but almost a 6-2 goal line look yeah, for they, this uh, central team. Hard. And there's some motion early. I believe they've jumped. They were trying to get the ball to Nigene Harrell on the toss sweep. Yeah, it looked like they came out 4-4, shifted quickly to 6-2. Maybe they're like, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to beat us with the pass. We're not going to let you run the ball on us. So, yeah, the, 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 the Bruins, they, all they have to do to get into that 6-2, maybe kind of a goal line look. I don't know if it's a man cover look yet, but all you got to do is take those outside linebackers and move them up and put them in more of a defensive end look. And that's how they're lined up again here, even on first and 15 now from the 39-yard line. Devin Rogers, the quarterback under center for the Bulldogs, he's had a great start to the year. Deep motion, they're going to run the toss sweep again, and they're stretching the field. Caden Ferguson giving chase. There we go. Harrell broke a tackle. He's going to pick up about eight yards. So, Nigene Harrell, a good run to start the game. Let's see if they do that again. Maybe they're, they're pushing hard. You're going to have to run it on us. You're well, not gonna, I mean, you're going to have to pass on us. You're not going to be able to run it on us. Well, that's what they're going to try to do, but a nice eight-yard, maybe even a nine-yard pickup there for Nigene Harrell. That's a good it's, little chunk. It's going to be second down and six now after the eight-yard gain. Uh, from the 48-yard line, again, same formation, double wing, wide receiver to the right. Rodgers under center. It's Trey Brown at fullback. They're going to give to Brown on the fullback trap. Oh Big run. God. Big run. Ferguson is able to make the tackle after 11 yards. Five, first down three. for Trey Brown. So fullback trap. We saw fullback the uh, guard, uh, guard pull and kick out mm -hmm. the, uh, on the opposite side and uh, just straight ahead to the big fullback. Yeah, it looked like they were keying on the outside run again. So that is a staple of this uh, wing T attack is to get that thing straight away downhill in a hurry. And we're in, uh, oh, offset. Every time they did this last week, it was jet sweep to the side of the offset back. Strand oh, will get it on the jet sweep. sweep. Off They're the right edge. There they read that one. Maybe a yard for Strand, a host of Bruins on the tackle there. 
I uh, saw 41, Adam Hobbs, and I believe that's uh, 27, Mason Goodman coming from the, uh, excuse me, Mason Thompson. <laughs> it's Nolan Goodman. Mason Thompson coming from the safety spot to make that, to help on that tackle. One yard gain for Strand on his first carry of the game. Well, it looks like the Bruins are reading that play. They, they ran that every time last week they set up for it, so I've got them scouted, and I didn't even spend any time watching film. Here we are, second and nine. Strand in deep motion, play, play action pass, got the tight end coming across, uh -oh. he's covered, Hobbs there on him. There we go, sack. Tucker Walters there, Andrew Hobbs, Adam Hobbs, he got Hobbs All sandwiched. Hobbs. <laughs> he got Hobbs sandwiched. <laughs> so uh, that's two big fellas there, and that's a big loss. So what was second and nine is now going to be, it looks like about a third and 19 maybe on the 10-yard loss for Devin Rogers. And um, they were covered. I'm telling that you, was great good job. Covered coming out of a six-two coach. They uh, they faked the uh, fullback. They faked the buck sweep to the motion man. Tried to come out of there, and uh, the tight end was covered. The uh, the deep corner route was covered. Nothing available to Rogers, and the the rush was in his face. Coach Preston wants a timeout mm -hmm. with 9:49 to go here at third down and 19. This is a Hardin County Educational Community Television Student Production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call Michelle at 270-763-3186. As I said, 949 to go here. The first opportunity for this John Harden offense. And uh, So why are you calling time out there, Coach? Boy, uh, they're on the other side of the 53rd and long. Uh, you know, I, I'd say Coach Preston is possibly looking at uh, four-down territory here. Maybe he just wants to pick up some of it right here. They're in the shotgun. Rodgers is going to look to the screen. It's oh, intercepted. Andrew Hobbs, the big defensive tackle, is going to come up with the pick. INT number 63. Wow. What that a play. Like trying to pull some kind of screen there. Well, they were going to throw the screen in the middle to number five, uh, Trey Brown, the fullback. They had him lined up in the slot, and they're bringing him inside, and um, kind of that old jailbreak screen that you used to see old Hal Mummy at UK run, and everybody has copied, but that did not work out. So the Bruins will take over great field position here after the return by Hobbs. <laughs> he tucked that thing away, and away he went. Uh, they've got it on the 36-yard line of the Bulldogs. Zach Spurrier, 15. We'll start it off. Braden Robbins in the slot on the left. They're going to give to Thompson immediately. He's around the left side. He is running over, folks. There's, There's a, a flag, flag down. Play. It's a six-yard gain, but I, that one may come back. Yeah, it looks like they uh, blew the whistle before he even ran off, ran off the play. Motion again, possibly, Tony. What do you think? Oh, they're going to call hold. Holding against the Bruins there. So, again, a good first down carry negated. Both teams shooting themselves in the foot on these first drives with uh, early uh, penalties. And so that will be a 10-yarder from the spot of the foul. And that is the line that's, of scrimmage. So it's going to be a, a – ooh, it's back from the line of scrimmage. That's going to be uh, bring up a first down and 22 uh, after the penalty. So Bruins' uh, offense is not set up for these long yardage kind of situations here. Again, the Bulldogs are in that – they're in a more of a 4-3 look with two deep safeties here, especially against – this shotgun look, play action look, 53 in pursuit. That's Solomon. Great run tackle. by Spurrier. Breaks two tackles. Breaks another. Well, he's going like to get, get back to it. Back all that yard that they he lost. He sure did. 13 yard carry for Zach Spurrier. Um, boy, a couple of opportunities. Solomon Bennett had an opportunity. 53 in the backfield. And Spurrier showed some speed. Yeah, and he made some guys miss there. Nobody so, was open downfield. That was great coverage by John, though. So shifty running by the big 6-2 quarterback. And they're going under shotgun again. Well, yeah, back under center. center. They're going to call it second and 11 from the 37-yard line. Braden Robbins in motion. It's a traditional wing T look. Off tackle power. Lots of space. Some Terry Brooks right breaks outside. 
He does have to. Breaks another tackle. Brooks still on his feet. Down to the 17-yard line. That's going to be a gain of 20 yards for Terry Brooks. You wondered where the production might come from. There's Terry Brooks with a big carry. The junior. And again, that's where the production may have to come from. People like Terry Brooks and Mason Thompson are going to have to pick up the slack for, for the missing Trayvon Williams tonight. So first down and 10 now in the red zone at the, about the 18. They're going to mark it at the 18-yard line here. Thompson to the left. They're going to give straight ahead to Thompson. He breaks off the left side, running over a tackler. Wow. Woo. I think that was number 12, the That's lead about tackler. six yards on that carry, Coach. Six yards. Kevin McCroskey came up to make tackle, and he paid for it. He paid for it. He lowered his shoulder and got the boom. <laughs> They're going to, boy, they're moving it up even further. I'm going to give that seven-yard gain. Nice run for Mason Thompson. And so the physicality of the Bruins early on is a little bit much for this uh, John Harden defense there. It's a good-sized defense, but they look a little bit outmanned at this point. Thompson is going to be on the right now in this shotgun look. Give to Braden Robbins. Nothing and there's on that play. Wow, Solomon Bennett, number 53. That's that penetration you talked about pregame, Tony. Wow. So Robbins is going to lose three yards. It'll bring up a third down and six, maybe five even. Both teams are doing a little bit of mix-up between wing tee looks and spread. Even when they get in that shotgun look, it, it's a lot of wing tee types of sets and a lot of wing tee principles. Uh, that one there just looked like a jet sweep, and, and if you get penetration, it was a little slow moving, and the penetration got there, so... They're moving a man up. It looks like a five-man front with man-to-man -man coverage. They're going to try to get it in the flat. Oh. They had Robbins wide open. The ball knocked down. Down That's by. trying to pick up the number. number 20. On. That's 28. That's Keandre Strand. So big play on the defensive side of the ball by Keandre Strand. I think Braden Robbins might have just walked into the end zone wide open in the flat against the man coverage look there. It'll bring up fourth down and uh, with no kicker. With no kicker. They're, they're going, going for it. For it. Uh, here we, we're seeing the first evidence uh, of that situation where the kicker, Case Van Blyenberg, is out in the shotgun. Tight end wing left. They're going to give to Mason Thompson on fourth and six. He drives forward. He's right at the marker. Man, this is close. Looks like I think they're going to call him just short of it. Uh, he needed to get to just inside the eight. They're going to mark it at just short of the eight. So uh, a four-yard gain for Mason Thompson. Interesting call there, Tony. What did you think about that? I don't know. Maybe they thought they were going to second-guess him being in the spread and well, drop back in coverage. But They ran it to the strong side. They ran it to the tight end wing side, gave uh, Mason Thompson the ball off tackle. Just a basic off tackle run. It, it didn't, uh, nothing else going on there. Maybe a power. There may have been a guard pulling the lead. Well, the Bulldogs will take back over this time on their own nine yard lines. They're going to give to Strand, and there's Adam Hobbs right there to stuff some, that play. No gain that was for some Keandre Strand. They were up on the line. They were, they were pushing that John Harden offensive line back to cause that, that mishap right there. So Keandre Strand, they're trying to give him the ball on the off-tackle play. I believe that was probably Buck Sweep right there, and they missed uh, one of the pulling guards missed Adam, Adam Hobbs, the outside linebacker. He was standing right in the hole and uh, stuffed that play. Second down and 10, 646 remaining here in the first quarter. Both teams running the ball quite a bit where the clock is moving, so... Harrell in motion. He'll take the toss sweep. They're trying to get outside. And he'll beat the uh, corner on that, pushed Ooh. out of bounds by 11. That's Blunt uh, that pushing a, him out of bounds. That was a close call right there. He was about to break it downfield, Coach. He so, slipped up out of bounds. So 11, Lamarian Blunt pushes him out of bounds, short of the first down. Uh, they're going to say it was a five-yard gain for Nigene Harrell. And uh, that will bring up a third down and five. They need almost the 20, maybe uh, just 19 and a half to get that first down. And so uh, I believe that was number 12 for Central Harden who couldn't make the play on the tackle. Carter Robinson, they're going to run the, well, they the got jet sweep, right and there's there. Adam Hobbs again, a big four-yard tackle for loss. Big number 41 making a lot of that plays. Is, that is a lot of uh, big plays for him so far this game. Two tackles for loss for Adam Hobbs, interception for Andrew Hobbs. Huh. Maybe you ought to pay attention where those fellows are if you're the uh, if you're the Bulldogs. They have not been able to block or handle those two 
to this point. So uh, that'll bring up a fourth down and 10 on the five yard loss. Keandre Strand now three carries mm. minus four yards. And predictably they are kicking this ball away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get out of their, now, their end zone. They do have a solid kicker uh, right now. Uh, number 85, Jake Owens is back to do the punting. There's a flag down. The snap was away. Somebody jumped. Too much delay of game. Nope. False start against False the start. offense. It'll move back. So that'll make it fourth and 15 from the five. It makes it a little tougher to punt the ball. Yeah, you don't want to kick in the back of your end zone. He was already kicking in the end zone. Now he's kicking in the back. He's going to have his zone. heels uh, probably about a foot from that back end line. I mean, you, um, makes you know it tough. From coaching, you got that those steps. You have them counted for a reason. And he's a whole lot tougher the further back you get. So Jake Owens is going to station himself about a foot and a half from the back line. I see him take a look down. Where am I? <laughs> he needs to know that. He keeps. Oh, oh. my land. Number 11, Lamarian Blunt jumps off sides. It'll go right back. Back where was that? That let's, little flip let's, flop. Let's trade some penalties here. He and said penalties um, would, would maybe decide this game. I think uh, Lamarian. Uh, was smelling the uh, that back of the end zone, wanting to get to the uh, wanting to get to the kick. So maybe we're going to see them even here, try to get to the punter and see if they can't disrupt what Jake Owens is trying to do there. I believe it's number 75 for the Bulldogs as a snapper. That's Chase Litton. Very important snap right here. It's low. He's having trouble. Oh, oh my goodness, he gets it away, and the the kicker was hit. No flag down. Caught by Carter Robinson. He makes a good run back. He's to the 21. I'm looking for the flag, Tony. Yeah, there's he, not one there. He clipped a leg. <laughs> oh, he he, he, uh, he, got, he got some legs. He drilled uh, Jake. The only thing an official could say in that circumstance is, is that whenever you're trying to pick up a ball, you might they might be calling him a runner once the ball is fumbled and fumbled. Ball rolled and he dropped it, and so. But well, I, he that's, saying he kicked kicked into the defender. Uh, but I don't, I think don't know. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think that's a thing. So <laughs> that's not a thing. Uh, I'm a little surprised that the no call there, but boy, the Bruins will take over on the Bulldog 21 yard line. That's right from the uh, left hash here again. Really Thompson the shotgun again. Thompson. They've got tight end right. Tom uh, Braden Robbins left. Thompson's going to play action fake. The ball is batted down. I believe that's number 32. Kendall Bryce was able to get his hand on it. Trying to go to the slant to Terry Brooks, and uh, nothing there. That would have been a tough throw anyways. He was covered pretty tight by number 33 from the yeah, John Harden. Yeah, 33, Freddie Arnold. Freddie had a heck of a game last week. Uh, he had a, uh, a blocked punt return for a touchdown and an interception in the game, so he had himself a heck of a night last they week. They maybe uh, had the ball week. got knocked down because it looked like uh, <laughs> Freddie was breaking there, on there that was a one. better position to catch the ball than the, uh, the Bruins were. It looked like it. So we got tight end right. That's Hobbs. We got Robbins in the slot to the left. Two backs with Terry Brooks in the backfield running off tackle power right. He cuts it back early. Good cut back. Good run. Good run. He that picks looks up like about a first eight. Down there, or pretty dang on close to it, coach. Maybe a yard short. Probably a nine yard game. I think you're right, Tony. So Brooks has carries of 20 yards and nine right, yards. Uh, we're going to give him eight. They're moving. They're moving the. Um, Moving a down marker back a little bit here to, to indicate third and eight. Uh, again, the ball's on the right hash. Looks like we're going to go two tight ends in this case. Overbalanced look to the right. It's going to be Thompson straight ahead. He's hitting the backfield. I don't know. What do you think, Tony? Well, it's close. They have a turnover there. He may have put it on the ground as well. Mm. They are taking a good look at it here. And the Bulldogs have come up with the and turnover. The so in, uh, so deep in the red zone here, a turnover. So we've seen a turnover on downs. They came up short a yard on fourth down on the last series. Now third and two, and they put it on the ground. I don't know if they were going to have the first down or not, but it would have been fourth and inches, and they were going for it. They are going for it with their kicker out. Mm. So we've had a turnover from each team so far. That was one of our keys. Who's going to win the turnover battle and right now? Is dead even 4:40 to go here in the first quarter, and the Bulldogs will take back over from their own 12-yard line. Wing T, traditional wing T, look to the right. They're going to give to Strand off tackle on the buck sweep. 
stuffed again. I see big number 72, Brock Burton on the play. Tucker Walters, 64 there as well. And a host of others. Uh, Braden, no, that's Adam Hobbs Willie again. Hobbs was in the there. The pile. Yeah, he's on the bottom of that pile as well. So it'll be second down and 10 a strand. Again, unable to get anything going to this point. He's got four carries and he's still at minus four yards. So the, the Bruins so far, this defense, we knew it was stout, but uh, didn't know how they'd match up. Well, look at their dude staying with that 6 2. They're in that 6 2 look right now. It looks like they're playing a little man cover. Again, off he's tackle against off Strand's side. got some space this time. We got I think a there's a the couple, back, like yeah, a couple flags down. I believe the tackle was made by Brooks, number nine, again, on the edge. It's going to be about an eight, uh, about seven yard gain, but that one's coming back as well. Yeah, look like number seventy on John Harden. Yeah, number seventy, Nathan Messenii. Messenii, one of their key defensive line. Well, he made a lot of plays last week against E-Town. Fantastic defensive player, but got caught this time. And that, uh, boy, that penalty is going to take them back deep. So it's going to be second down and 15. And that was a, that was a sad block in the back because well, he really wasn't involved in the play. It was kind of a – You hate those calls hate when those you're calls. a coach. It's like, listen, you know, if, if it affects the play, call it. But that, when it has nothing to do with the play, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, they already As broken past him yeah. at that point. So the mistake is a hard pill to swallow, but the call is as well. So 3.56 to go here. Now it's second down and 15 from their own six-yard line, and they're going shotgun now. Rodgers, again, has been very effective. They haven't thrown it much this year, but he's 9 of 14 with three touchdowns, and he's going to be sprinting out oh. to his left. And, boy, there's a hole there, Yates, but he's got a lot of space. Rodgers pulls it down on the run. Tackle made there by number 52. Uh, that's Easton Link uh, with the tackle, but a big run there. He'll pick up about 12 yards, bring up a third down and four. We'll call that an 11-yard gain for Rodgers. So uh, he was sacked for minus 10 earlier, and now a pickup of 11. Third down and four, big play there. No call on the edge is uh, – Big number 52, Devontae Yates. Looked like he had a handful of jersey on the uh, defensive end there. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling is a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of exit 91 on Interstate I-65. Uh, I Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. Eton Exterminating. Is a locally owned family run pest control company and has been serving Hardin, Mead, Grayson, and Nelson counties and the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270 737 6900 or go online at mugabug.com. I really think John Hunter wants to get a first down here, try to building that momentum, show they can get some yardage against this Bruin defense. It's been really tough going so far. They do not have much, that's for sure. An eight-yard gain by Nigene Harrell on a toss sweep and an 11-yard scramble by Devin Rogers. So third and four, I agree, Tony, with 3.27 to go. No points on the board for either squad, but Central Harden has dominated the field position and the offensive battle here. Shotgun formation again. Rogers going to keep, pulls it out, and Rogers got all kinds of space. Super. He's deep in Bruin territory. They're giving chase. Brooks has a chance. He's going to cut back. Caden Ferguson there. So good hustle. And there's going to be another flag. Lamarian Blunt and Caden Ferguson run him down. He's down to the 32-yard line. And that's going to be a gain of 50, no, 49 yards for Devin Rogers. So a big run for Rogers, and he flips the field just like you were talking about, Tony. Mm. So he faked the ball to Keandre Strand and kept on the uh, quarterback counter, is what that was, uh, with a lead pulling guard. And uh, there's also going to be a penalty on the Bruins. So it looked like the ball was going to be at the 34, which means that would have been a. Uh, 47-yard game, and they're going to have a 15-yard penalty on the Bruins. So in the red zone, Tony, uh, from the 17-yard uh, line of the Bruins, John Harden now threatening. 
Well, being back in their back in their own field, all the way on the other side, then a bonehead penalty. Mm. A big swing there. So a lot of mistakes being made on both sides. They're going to stay in the shotgun. He's got Keandre Strand with him. Are they going to use their third and final timeout of the of the half yeah. here in the first quarter? He won't have the option to call another <laughs> timeout here as we move forward. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. Tune in weekly for all local HCEC TV programs airing on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2 and Spectrum Channel 184. All HCEC TV programs on the HCEC TV YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel today to get your local community sports and events. We'd also like to thank NFHS, the National Federation of High School Sports, and its support in providing live streaming service. Contact NFHS.com and subscribe today. A special thanks to our HCEC TV crew. Andrew Walker, Jonathan Bland, Jeremy Miller, Kyler Barkley, uh, Aliana Holt, and Gina Ryan in the truck. Thank you so much for bringing us the action tonight to our students and Gina for giving uh, the, the great leadership to that program that we have. So 3.07 to go here, first and 10. What are, you, what are you looking for? A little more of the same, a little more scramble and running around from the quarterback, Tony? It looks like that's the part of the plan. <laughs> I'm just wondering if the three timeouts are going to bite him in the butt before this half is done with. It's a give to Strand off tackle. He's got a lot of space out him and Brooks. Brooks is going to make a nice tackle, but not before, about an eight- or nine-yard gain. It's going to be a nine-yard gain for Strand, his first big carry of the game. It'll be second and one from the eight-yard line um, of the Bruins, and so they're inside the ten now. And uh, 244 and counting here, and the Bulldogs looking to draw first blood. Bruins have had their chances, and now it's the, the Bulldogs with their shot. Yeah, we're looking at th th this looks like this is going to be good territory for John to score. It looks like they're starting to get momentum on the run game, it's slowly picking up. So 24, Bruce Mills to the left along with Isaiah Lee. Number 18, Najeen Harrell to the right along with Kendall Bryce, the tight end, 32. Devin Rogers in the shotgun, Keandre Strand to his left. So tight end and wing to the right. That you, Boy, Keandre Strand has a big split to the left. Like maybe that's the direction they're going to go. And they are going to sprint out that way. He's going to get outside there. Andrew Hobbs giving chase, gets a hold. Oh, does not let him go. <laughs> oh, there's a flag down. There's no reason for a flag on that. I have no idea. He grabbed him by the shoulder pad. Yeah, it's, it's not, not the not back of the shoulder. At it's all. not a horse collar. It's no. not the back of the pads. Um, it's not a face mask. Uh, but there was no gain, I think. No, there was a one-yard gain. It would have been a first down anyway for Rodgers. They're going to call Andrew Hobbs. Great hustle by the big man to get out there and make a play. I mean, he just grabbed a handful of shoulder pad there on the side. I don't know what they're calling on him here. That's not a horse collar when you get a hold of the front of the shoulder pad. So uh, I could not tell you. They're going to call a horse collar from the side. Uh, I've never heard of that before. That is, not a, that is not a call. I just saw the white hat official grab the inside of the front of his collar and pull it like he's describing what happened. Uh, that's not a call in football, just in case you guys are wondering out there. Uh, that will bring up, though, a uh, uh, first and goal. Uh, they're calling that an unsportsmanlike horse collar. That's when you grab the back of the shoulder pads. Yeah, I mean, he, he clearly grabbed that shoulder pad. Just looking, but I guess that's a retribution for the tackling the kicker there. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no what's idea what they're thinking. Uh, all right. Well, first and goal either way, but in this case, first and goal from the two, staying in that shotgun. Look, this is. Usually Trey Brown territory, the big fullback, but he's not out there. They're going to give to Keandre Strand over the right side. He is stuck. Right maybe at the maybe anywhere. a gain of a half a yard uh, before he was driven back. A host of Bruins, Easton Link, 52 there. Tucker Walters and Caden Ferguson were all there. Yeah, he got swallowed by that defensive line. He tried to hit the hole, and it closed quick. So a gain of a yard there for Keandre Strand, and they've got second and goal from the one, 146 and counting here in the first quarter. And they're going to go to another uh, a big big guy in the lineup. They're going to take Mills out. They're going to go to another uh, tight end. They're in a two tight end wing T look with the wing back to the right. Goal line look from the Bruins, given to Strand again off the right side. He is hit 
just short of it. Oh, they're going to say he got in. Wow. Tony, do you think he got in there? Do you think he was in the end zone? I could. Yeah, he crossed the plane. Okay. So, Keandre Strand from a yard out. Touchdown, Bulldogs. So, the penalty there hurts the Bruins. Um, yeah, you you multiple penalties there hurt him. The the two personal foul calls. Yeah, the two personal foul calls. Mm. One but him half the distance to the goal, and one but him gave him 15 yards up the field. So with 1:23 to go, the home team on the board, six to nothing. With 1:23 to go in the first quarter, Jake Owens will set up. Devin Rogers will be the holder. Letting good snap, it's down, up, beautifully kicked. That should be through, and it'll be seven to nothing. And so the Central Harden Bruins down early here in the first quarter. John Harden Bulldogs taking advantage of some penalties, turnovers, and a great run by Devin Rogers. Yeah, there was a couple uh, key plays on that drive. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television Student Production. ACEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools Live Channel 1 programming. It's sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville, online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company, offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more to explore your options or schedule your appointment today. Call Michelle at 270-763-3186. So Jake Owens will kick off for the Bulldogs here. And uh, back deep will be Carter Robinson and Terry Brooks. And uh, Owens last week against E-Town was knocking the ball to the goal line or just inside the end zone. So we'll see what uh, Jake can do from. So it looks like John capitalized on their turnover they got, but. The Bruins did not. Absolutely. That ball is going to go into the end zone. So Jake Owens will put it deep, and the uh, Bruins will start at their own 20, their worst field position starting for the night. you got to be looking at the conditioning on the teams, too. We're going to have a slugfest like this. We're just going to be back and forth and back and forth. Who's Who's got the, the punch the last all game? It's going to be a big deal. I agree. Quarter. You know, along with the turnover battle, that was the other thing I was thinking because some of these guys are going to be going both ways. Who can be fit more physical late in the game? And we'll see uh, see who maybe starts to wilt first. Again, that John Harden offense really started to look better in that on that. Um, well, the Bruins defense is on the field quite a while that first quarter as well. So we've got a four four look here. 4-4, four, four, cover zero, look, man-to-man -man cover. Trying to give to Robbins on the reverse, nothing doing. Number 53, Solomon Bennett back there to help make the play, along with Devontae Yates. That'll bring up second and 12. Two-yard loss for Robbins, so that reverse, not a real good idea. Well, look around on the shotgun plays, it almost feels like they're not moving as quickly to get the plays off that of backfield. It's taken a really long time. That play is a slow developing play, and and a Robbins is a powerful runner, but he's not getting there very quickly. He's had carries for minus five and minus two. That's not getting anywhere at this point. Fake there. Spurrier's going to run the read option and run it straight ahead. He's going to pick up about seven. Uh, that's going to bring up probably a third down and seven. We have, have we seen the read option in the other games, Coach? Have, have we seen what? Have we seen the read option before? Or just Not really. Run? That's a bit of a new wrinkle there. Um, I, I'm sure they're calling the run on that. They, they're probably not reading that, but it was a read option look, and as the clock is ticking down, it will be the end of the first quarter. So at the end of one, the home team, seven Bulldogs, Bruins zero. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling is a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of exit 91 on Interstate 65. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating is a locally-owned, family-run pest control company. 
and has been serving hard in Mead Grayson and Nelson counties and the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. So we're ready to start the second quarter with a third down and seven for the uh, Bruins here from their own 25-yard line. Do you think they'll take to the air? They've only got one pass attempt to this point. Is this doing, the time, Tony? They start doing something. Last time they had a third down and long, they uh, ran the ball. Mm, that's right. They didn't go for the pass. Yeah. Well, they're going to line up in shotgun with a trips formation to the right with Robbins, Robinson and Brooks I to, be to the right. I want to see a screen play out of this coach. No, they... He's going to throw it out to Robbins in the flat. He's got a lot of space. Braden Robbins punishing the tackler down to about the 41-yard line. That's going to be a gain of 16 for Braden Robbins on the pass. So 16-yard completion there. They ran off the uh, defensive backs deep with the two outside receivers. And the third ran to the flat, and Robbins was wide open. First and 10 from their own 40-yard line. The Bruins need to mount a response to that touchdown scored on the last series. It's a 4-3 cover two look. It looks like a two-man look, and they're going to sprint out. Spurrier chased by gonna, Yates. He, he's gonna he's gonna look ball. back across the field. He finds Hobbs. Great catch by Hobbs. He's gonna get it down to about the 39 yard line. And so that is a 21 yard pass from Spurrier to Hobbs. And I have always felt like they needed to use Adam Hobbs more. He is a huge target and really dangerous in the open field. Yeah, I thought for a second there the quarterback was just gonna go and just take it himself and then Hobbs opened up wide open. There you go. It's a good throw uh, by Spurrier, kind of back across your body, right-hander rolling to your left. That's a hard throw. Again, they're in this 4-3 uh, cover two look. They're going to give to Thompson off the right side. He's got one man to beat. He runs over uh, Freddie that's Arnold. good hard running. Good hard running. Actually, that's Caden Ferguson on the run there, not Thompson. So they've gone to Ferguson in the backfield, and he will pick up uh, six yards. Be second and four from the 34-yard line of the Bulldogs. And this is some good momentum building plays. So both offenses starting to get on track. We saw the John Harden offense really look a lot better on that last series. And now the Central Harden offense starting to mount something as well. 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Under center again, double wing formation, tight end left. They're going to get to Brooks on the quick reverse there. He's going to be tackled. It looks uh, like he may have picked short up the game. first time if he's just short. I think he's about a yard short. I believe that was Kendall Bryce on the tackle. And um, he will be just a little short. A gain of three for Brooks. Fourth, excuse me, third down. That'll bring up a third down. They're going to call it two here. It looked like he'd gotten to one yard from the marker there, but they're going to call it third and two. 10-30 and counting here. Yeah, with the absence of a kicker and deep in Bulldog territory, you'd expect that they've got, this is four down territory. So Spurrier in the shotgun. Ferguson now in motion. They're going to call a timeout. Will the Bruins, it can't be the Bulldogs. They are <laughs> out of timeouts. Time <laughs> so this is an HCEC TV student production, the division of Harding County Schools. Special thanks for our live sports coverage sponsor, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Waddles Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Blue Reno Ribbon Renovations, a Mark Harris company, and the E-Town Exterminating. Tune into Weekly for all local HCEC TV programs. Air on the Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cables Channel 2 and Spectrum Channel 184 all HCEC TV programs and on the HCEC TV YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel today and get your local community sports and events. Special thanks to our HCEC crew provided. We'd also like to thank the NFHS and National Federation of High School Football Sports 
is supported in providing live streaming service. Contact NFHS.com to subscribe today. Third down and two. Spurrier alone in the backfield. Bad snap, snap. broken play, and Spurrier's just going to try to turn it up, and he's going to run over several players for and a he's first gonna down. He's going to pick up Still more than what it looked pile. like. His helmet has come off, and he picks up about seven yards on the run. His helmet was ripped off, and he's a little bit hot about it. So I don't know how the helmet came off in that pile. He's going to have to come out for a play. But Zach Spurrier, oh, they're going to throw a flag on him for taunting the John Harden defense after running – several of them over but uh, he was not happy he'll have to come out for a play and uh it's going to put them in a bad spot uh, kind of a bonehead move there to uh turn around and uh, jaw back to the uh to the defense especially after uh, creating a positive situation have a negative situation bad snap he was able to pick up the first down and then have that happen at the end of the play i'm sure john was feeling frustrated giving up that first down and then turn around and be able to push him back so the, uh, the down markers are at the 24-yard line. They should be first and 10 there, but with the uh, personal foul call, uh, that'll make it first and 25 now on the 15-yard penalty. The Bruins will be on about the 39-yard line now. First and 25. Um, just a bad idea, kind of a... Kind of a uh, Bonehead move. Now his helmet came off, so he has to come out for a play. And so number 10, who's uh, Caden Elmore, will, will uh, come in, little brother of Chase Elmore, the quarterback several years ago for this Central Harden Bruin football squad. So Elmore will at least take one snap here. He's got Caden Ferguson behind him, Adam Hobbs, and Braden Robbins at the wing. They're going to give to Ferguson. He'll come off the left side. They're going to push the pile again for about a four-yard gain. And that'll make it second and 21 after Ferguson gets four. As a coach, you got to hate it when stuff like that happens. You're starting to build momentum. You're getting positive yards. The offense is finally clicking. And then have to have something like that just like shut it down. And you feel like you got to reset all over again and build this momentum back up. Absolutely. Second and 21. It's kind of hard to have momentum on a second and 21 situation here. Keep any of that going. So a great play by Spurrier on the first down run. Then turning around to, to jaw back at the John Harden defense was a huge error, just kind of a sophomore immature mistake. So he's going to look down the field. They're running the crossing routes. He's trying to find space. He's got Braden Robbins open, but he's going to tuck it and go himself. Almost breaks the tackle. Can't quite get it. He gets four-yard gain. Um, it's going to bring up a third down and 15. Braden Robbins opened up late on the, uh, on the crossing routes. Something called mesh is what they were running right then. So the mesh route came open late, but uh, unable to keep his head up long enough to find it. This is going to be a really big play for uh, the Bruins. But you got to feel they're in two down territory they here are. at the end here because, I mean, with a kicker out, you got to yeah. try to make something happen. You're on the 31 yard line with 8.25 to go here. You might as well go for it. So uh, two, four down territory. Play action look there. Hobbs is open. He can't get it to him. He's going to drop down to run it again. He's pulling it down a little bit too early there. He's going to lose a ton of yards, uh, a 10-yard loss on the sack. Tackle, I believe, is 12. Kevin McCroskey on the sack. So they're going to have to punt on the 10-yard loss. Again, if Zach Spurrier would, keep, would have kept his head up a little longer there, he would have found... Adam Hobbs standing by himself in the flat. Um, if he could have just floated the ball to Hobbs, it probably would have been a first down pickup. Or pretty close to it. I mean, it's it's tough doing those reads at this age and seeing what's, yeah. what's going on down the field. You know, when had you a get couple the pressure, you, running you, the your ball, head comes down. He feels like he can run the ball. Yeah. Robbins is going to punt. He gets the kick away. It is uh, to the – it's going to be out of bounds. Right. There's another flag down. I believe it's going to be a personal foul on number three, Isaiah Lee. He was uh, totally tied up uh, with number five for the uh, Bruins. That's uh, Brandon Lee. And so um, I believe you're going to see a John Harden personal foul now. So the Bulldogs ready to pick up first and ten, but I think that penalty is going to march them back.
That's yeah. pushing them way back. That yeah. wasn't a bad punt. No, not bad. Uh, it, it got – where did they mark it? Did they mark it at the 20 or the 15? I thought they'd marked it maybe at the 15. But we're still talking it over. The offense is ready to get on the ball, but the ball is getting ready to move back about 10 more yards. They called it not a personal foul. It was it quite was a – holding. They called it a holding. There was yep. a scrap going on down there, and they, they called it a hold. I didn't know if they were going to call that a personal foul. So that is going to take the Bulldogs back to their own three-yard line, Tony. So That's rough business. Now we got a reverse thing going on right there. Exactly. So the same mistake just on the other side here. Now they're going to start uh, first down and about. First and about. Ooh. Yeah, they're going to make it first and 10 from the three. I thought it was going to be – actually, it was during the play, so it's going to be first and 10 there. It's kept by Rodgers on the fake, and he's got nowhere to go on that play. And there's some uh, scrapping going on in there as well as Tucker Walters loses his helmet. So several Bruins struggling to keep their helmets on. Looks like they're going to give him a gain of maybe – a half a yard, they're gonna, or a yard, they're going to give almost the four-yard line, second down and nine. If you're the John Harden Bulldogs right here, you just want to get some positive yardage and just get out of that hole. You don't want to be sitting back there and giving up something big like a safety. Absolutely, and with 648 and counting here, I'm sure they'd like to get a couple first downs so if they can run the clock down, they can make it a lot tougher on Central Harden to get a score here before halftime, uh, again, as the clock is starting to, to run down. So... From their own four-yard line, second down and nine. Big series here for both sides. Bruins, I'm sure, would like to get this thing back with good field position here. This time he's going to give to Strand, and Strand off tackle is going to have a good gain there. He's going to get up about to the nine-yard line, about a five-yard gain for Strand. Tony, that was the off-tackle power play to Strand there to the tight end wing side. It'll bring up a third down and four. I thought they may have switched into the wishbone. We saw them doing mm. it on the warm-ups. They ran that being, some last being, week. Being pinned back there. Mm. Yeah. Staying in the shotgun, a little more dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 5.54 and counting. Big third down and four here. The Bruins need to get this field position. And we're going to see trips left. A big spread formation. Rodgers is going to go to the right. It's knocked down. A good play there. Adam Hobbs making another play. So Adam Hobbs and Andrew Hobbs again. Their great night continues. And uh, it'll bring up fourth down and four. And it looks like the uh, Jake Owens will be coming on to punt this thing away. So the Bruins get done what they needed to get done. And they needed to badly there. They could not give another first down up to John Hart and let them start building even more momentum from the last drive that they had. So 5.40 to go here after the incomplete pass. The uh, clock will stop there. First pass attempt for the uh, second pass attempt, actually, because there was an interception earlier. So they've yeah, had one knocked down pass. and one intercepted. So uh, That was more have, like a shuttle pass to the, yeah. <laughs> to the defensive line. So the John Harden uh, pass offense is not off to a great start tonight. They've been run, run heavy as they've been all year. Ooh, ball the fumble. Punt. Smashed into the uh, punter again, but I guess because there was a uh, dropped fumbled snap, they're going to let that go again. I, I don't know. Uh, but Jake Owens did a great job recovering. Dropped well, the ball. Well, they dropped snap. The ball's a live ball. At that it's point a live ball. That's right. right. Everybody's so they, they can try to snatch absolutely. it Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Which is what they called on the first one as well. That's why they didn't call a uh, roughing penalty on that one either because the ball was on the ground. They're calling a, a muff or a fumble. And uh, you can try to take – he's a runner at that point. You can try yep. to take the thing away from him. Uh, a loose ball is free game. And so uh, no call on that. And so the, the punt, I mean, Jake Owens able to get it away, but only for 14 yards. It'll be first and 10 from the Bulldog 23-yard line. Central Harden, this is their third time starting in great field position. So far, no points. 529 to go. They're going to give to Thompson off the right side. Nothing there. Kevin McCroskey there to make the tackle. You think with all this great field position, the Bruins would have scored by now. They've been having a hard time getting that field. Maybe they are really feeling the effects of having uh, Trey Williams out of the game. So the loss of Trayvon Williams, yes, may be having an impact here. A one-yard game for Mason Thompson on the carry, 5:02 and counting, and it's second down and nine. Again, as we've mentioned several times, no uh, real 
opportunity to try to kick a field goal. So, you, again, this deep four down territory, the Bruins may be looking to run. Trips formation to the right, Thompson to the right. We ought to be looking for a sprint out to the right. And that's what we get there. Looking down the field, he's got Brooks open. Brooks is going to go down and make a nice catch at the 12-yard line. That should be a first down for the Bruins. Eleven yard gain on the pass. So Spurrier uh, got a little run happy in that last uh, series. He had some open receivers, but making another good throw. He's three for four right now for a good handful of yards. Eleven that's yards. That's the second to time with that trips uh, trips look that's given John some issues. They're not able to find those receivers. I agree. Uh, they're in a four-three cover two kind of a look, but it's a two-man look. Thompson off the left side. Oh, he's got a few yards on the carry there. It's probably about a three-yard gain for Thompson. One of the lead blockers for the Bruins made uh, a critical error, which is when you get in the hole and there's no one there to block, you keep going. You don't turn keep around. Up, yeah. <laughs> the lead blocker turned around to look to see what was going on. And um, that is a – that's an error there. <laughs> Always look for somebody ahead of you to smash. Don't look Absolutely. back behind you. <laughs> You don't, you don't, that's no concern of yours. <laughs> Trying to find somebody is a concern of yours. Tight end to the right. Thompson to the left. Going. Jet sweep to Brooks, and they're all over that, that jet sweep. Jet sweep has given them nothing tonight. Again, uh, John's got some really good speed on their defense. They do. Getting that outside hit is going to be tougher for the Bruins to do. Yeah, I believe that was McCroskey again and uh, Isaiah Lee on the tackle. And McCroskey is one of the leading tacklers for this defense. I think they are, he is the leading tackler for this defense. So that's a loss of one for Brooks. And um, third down and eight. Shotgun again. Shotgun formation, two receivers to the right. Again, four down territory for this Bruins squad. They're going to sprint out to the receiver. right again. And he's not going to find him. He's going to be sacked. Yeah, sack there. Again, that is going to be Solomon Bennett, 53. He's made a lot of plays in the backfield tonight and unable to get the ball off. Seven-yard loss there. Bring up fourth down and 13. They can get a first down at the, about the one-and-a-half-yard line. But for all intents and purposes, it's fourth and goal from the 15-yard line. So a seven-yard sack there, a couple sacks here. They've been putting a lot of pressure. Assume they're going to throw it here. 214 and counting, and the, and the Bruins uh, trying not to squander, and there's a problem, and they're going to call timeout. Time uh, the Bruins. This is a Hardin County Education Community Television Student Production. HCC TV is the division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs, Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call Michelle at 270-763-3186. So fourth down and... 14 for a first down, 15 for the touchdown, 209 to go. Tony, uh, trickery time. Trickery. <laughs> trickery time. Trickery is a good idea. I'm not sure what I would do I always feel like my coach defense in the offense calls a timeout on a long, long, long yeah, play. Yeah, you better watch trickery, out for something. Gonna happen. Watch out for something crazy. So I don't know if Mattingly has a big bag of tricks like that, but he has two receivers to each side. Thompson is going to be behind kind of a pistol look behind Zach Spurrier. Brooks and Hobbs to the right, Robbins and Robinson to the left. He's going to sit in the pocket there and look down the field. Oh, he's got him. He's got Robinson going high for the ball right through his hands, Tony. That was a good throw. That, that should have been throw. caught. Uh, Carter Robinson jumped high. Ball was put in a good spot over the outside shoulder, and he couldn't come down with it. So incomplete pass from Spurrier to Carter Robinson. And that's a hard throw for a kid to make. But that, it was there. He had a chance for it. Robinson had a step. The throw was on the outside shoulder and high. And um, 
Robinson jumped for it, and it looked like it just kind of got right through his hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tough play, 2.03 to go. The Bulldogs 7, Bruins 0. Bulldogs uh, maybe will look to see if they can get something going here late in the half. The only thing bad is they have no timeouts. Motion, timeout. giving it straight ahead to Trey Brown to the fullback. And uh, they started at the 15. He's going to pick up three. It's only his, only his second carry of the game. He's got two carries for 14 yards, and uh, it'll be second down and seven from the 17-yard line. I think I'm the Bulldogs. I don't feel pressure to push hard to score. If something opens up, that's great. But yeah, they're letting the clock run right now. They don't no have time any timeouts. It's gonna be a hard time right. to like push the ball downfield with no that's timeouts. Right. There's, there's a little bit of a time left. And Coach Madden will probably he's got one timeout left. He'll wait and see where they are here. If they pick up a first down, he'll let the clock run. Off tackle play. Keandre Strand's got space, and he has run out of bounds by number 27, Mason Thompson. And that's a good uh, good pickup of about 10 yards. So Keandre Strand getting something going there. And uh, with 118 to go, he's run out of bounds. The clock stops. So off tackle power play to Keandre Strand. I believe they pulled the backside guard to lead up through the hole. And uh, he was able to get the edge actually that time. Tight end left, double wing formation, strand Same in formation motion. Again. They're going to give it back the other way on the scissors Going play. Inside. Adam Hobbs there to make the tackle. They, they were at the 26. Yeah, Two Jones is playing it safe here, just trying to get, get some nerves, burn some clock, get get to the second half and regroup for another, another go at it. Two-yard gain for Harrell. 58 seconds now and counting. Second down and nine. Maybe second and eight. Straight ahead, Trey Brown. Trey Brown's got some yards on the carry, and a host of Bruins are going to bring him down. Looks like about a four-yard gain. That'll leave a uh, third down and four. 31 seconds here, and they're going to spot the ball. Let's see if they have to snap again or not. Sixteen seconds and the clock is winding. I don't think they're going to run another play, as I see Keon Keandre Strand starting to unbuckle his helmet. So we'll go to halftime, Tony. Um, John Harden Bulldogs seven, Central Harden Bruins zero. We'll be back in about twelve minutes for second half action. See you in twelve. Can, can you guys down there hear me at all? Hello, I am. Can you hear Kyle me down Barkey. there in the truck? I am with the Media Arts Program in HCC okay, TV. Yeah, I'm a third year Tony up here can't hear me from, from, from uh, yeah, sponsors, his mic not coming through. My president of West Point Bank, Josh yeah. Hubbard. Josh, so tell us a little bit is. about West Point uh, Bank. One of my connections is yes, not good. So West Point Bank was purchased by it. First Breckenridge Bank here. Shares uh, in the early 1980s. Uh, we were one facility there in now. West Point, and we've expanded from yeah, come on up and West take a look. Point Thank you guys. into yeah. Upton, Glendale, Radcliffe, and Elizabeth County. So we have five locations throughout Hardin County, uh, owned by First Breckenridge Bank Shares, um, which owns uh, several other banks uh, throughout the Central Kentucky region. Uh, but West Point Bank is uh, in Hardin County with one location uh, in um, Upton, which is actually in LaRue County, but four branches in Hardin County uh, and one in LaRue County. Could you tell us a little bit about services offered new and old? Like? Absolutely. So West Point Bank is a full service bank. Uh, we provide uh, free checking accounts, uh, savings accounts, certificates of deposit, uh, IRAs. We also uh, make loans for just about anything, uh, one to four family, primary residence loans, farm loans, agricultural loans, uh, multifamily, uh, automobile loans, uh, you name it, we, we can pretty much do it when it comes to banking. So we obviously, like I said, are, are a full service bank. Is there any specific areas of involvement in your community that the bank makes? Yes, so we really strive to serve the communities that we operate in. Uh, primarily all of Hardin, 
in the surrounding counties. Um, we pride ourselves in our employees living, working, going to church uh, in the communities that our banks are located in. So whether it be participating in, with HCEC TV, doing the, the sports coverage, um, the Heartland Parade, West Point River Days, Glendale Spring Fest, uh, Upton Days, just uh, the Hooray for Heroes or the Radcliffe Mayor's Breakfast, whatever that may be, we really strive to be involved and, and give back to the communities that we serve. So you were talking about community involvement and HCC TV sport coverage. Is there anything, like are you passionate about covering sports? Absolutely, so we've been a long time sponsor uh, of this programming. Um, when I grew up in high school, when I was growing up in high school, I obviously played high school sports. Uh, my son plays high school sports. Um, a lot of the employees who work for me, their children play high school sports. And I just think that sports are great for children of all ages. Uh, it teaches them uh, a lot of things. One, uh, how to be a good teammate. Uh, you need to be a good teammate in order to be a good employee. Uh, it teaches them accountability. Uh, it gives them, teaches them work ethic. Um, I think it teaches them how to win and how to lose. You know, life uh, can be hard. There's gonna be ups and downs. And uh, winning a game, losing a game, winning as a team, losing as a team, I think it just gives valuable insight to, to just life in general by playing sports. I completely agree and understand and we appreciate your sponsorship. Now, is there any other extra information you would like to let the viewing audience know? Uh, just in general, um, West Point Bank, uh, like I said, we strive um, to provide the best possible customer service that we can provide. Uh, we are uh, extremely enthusiastic about the communities that we serve, uh, the citizens in those communities, and uh, we would really like to be your bank um, and to establish uh, a relationship with you if we don't have one, and if we do have a relationship with you, to just further expand upon that relationship. Uh, we are, uh, uh, again, strive to provide the absolute best customer service uh, and just, uh, you know, uh, are just thrilled to be a part of the community that we serve. How can people get additional information about your bank? Do you have any sort of contact? Yes, so we obviously, as I, as I said earlier, we have five locations in, uh, or four locations in Hardin County, one in LaRue County. So West Point, Radcliffe, Elizabethtown, Glendale, and Upton. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can like our Facebook page. Uh, you can also visit us at westpointbank.com. All right, thank you again for your continued support. We wouldn't be able to do it without your support. Again, we appreciate you and let's have a good season. Hello, high school sports fans. I'm Gina Ryan, Director of Hardin County Educational and Community Television, and we're gonna give you another great interview with one of our outstanding sponsors for our live sports coverage. Uh, E-Town Exterminating is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Rich is here with us today, and Sean, since we're distanced uh, beyond six feet, we're gonna remove our masks. Okay. We like to model our good social distancing, but yes. uh, we like people to be able to hear us as well. Right. <laughs> Um, Sean, uh, practically from the very beginning, E-Town Exterminating has been a sponsor of HCEC TV's live sports coverage with Brandenburg Telecom. For those at home that may not know, tell us a little bit about E-Town Exterminating. How did it start? Well, we're a, a family-ran business, exterminating company. Uh, we were founded in 1976 by my parents, uh, Roy and Brenda Rich. Um, and we've been around since then. I'm the second generation uh, that's taken over and uh, we provide exterminating pest control termite services uh, throughout Hardin County and all the surrounding counties around here. What prompted your dad and mom to, to do that? What inspired them to start a business? Well, years ago, my dad was part of the government, state government, and he was over the, uh, he was the director of pesticides uh, on the regulation side. 
and uh, saw an opportunity and uh, wanted to go into the exterminating business. Sean, I know you, that you lost your father earlier this, this past year. Uh, tell us a little bit about your dad and what made him so special. Dad and I had a very unique uh, relationship um, as a father, son, and as business partner. And we spent a lot of time together. And so I was very fortunate to be able to spend a lot of time with him and to learn the business through his eyes. Um, and also, uh, he pushed me a lot and uh, as, as a business person. Um, but I was very fortunate to get those life experiences through him. I was going to say that, that closeness, riding in the truck together. <laughs> well, I started, uh, I started working with him uh, when I was in kindergarten. I would help and help spray houses and, and uh, from there, and we've been together ever since. Ever since. Yeah, that that mm -hmm. is just absolutely awesome. And uh, he's left a, a rich uh, legacy and yes. just like your last name it's a it's a rich legacy um, for that the, the community businesses that we have what really makes them unique is that they that you you serve those that are in your neighbors and you want to give that type of service um, what's that commitment like with your business majority of our customers have been with us for a long time and they're not only our customers but we consider them family. And so we want to go above and beyond for our family and customers. Tell me a little bit about how, this, how your services have evolved through the years. Well, uh, you know, when we first went into business, uh, it was mainly just doing like termite and pest control. Um, but over the last few years, we're doing a lot of bed bug uh, control now. Those uh, bed bugs have come back. Mm. Um, we do a lot of services for that. Uh, we take care of moles in yards, uh, mosquitoes. So we've, we've evolved that way. That's amazing. Now you've also really expanded your coverage area. So you started in Elizabethtown and where are you available now? Uh, we're in about eight different counties. Um, we go as far as uh, north uh, Shepherdsville. We go south. Uh, we go down in Hart County. We go over in Grace and Breck County, uh, LaRue, Green County, uh, over by Camelsville. So we, we cover a lot of, of our counties. When, you when your dad first opened the business, how many employees other than him and his wife? <laughs> there's, about, there's about three employees, and uh, we, about got, uh, we have about 40 now. Okay, awesome. Now, um, in addition to changing the services, the way you do that business has also changed because of technology. So what are some of those changes? that has occurred through the years? Well, the, the, the main thing is, is you know, util, utilization of computers, uh, the way that we do our data and how we uh, communicate with our uh, customers. Um, we do it that way and then also through, you know, uh, m through the media, through social media and stuff like that. With, um, it's, it's always good that rather than having just one visit and you're done, is to have like an ongoing contract. Yes. Okay, and what are the benefits of those contracts? And um, give us an example of one. Well, we do a lot of residential homes uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, we assign you to a regular technician. That technician gives you a call each month um, and, and uh, sets up an appointment, comes out and services the home. But if you have a problem in between those service, that, that monthly service, then uh, you just give our technician our office call and they come back out and they'll take care of it, no extra charge. Oh, that's amazing. Um, when people do call you, they usually get a person on the phone? <laughs> yes, uh, we have uh, four, our, four people in our, in, our, our, in our office staff and uh, they're there to take your call. Okay. Um, being a, a sponsor of our live sports coverage, why uh, was that important to you to get involved? It's particularly important for me because I know that with, with anything that has to do with uh, high school, um, especially with sports, um, they need the funding for it. And uh, as a company, that we like to be there to help support all the different high schools here in Hardin County. And you were an athlete yourself. 
Yes, <laughs> played uh, basketball and ran cross country and track. Okay, and we um, we do uh, cover all of those things. Uh, cross country and track, we usually do highlight features and such. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, we kind of had to put our beginning of our seasons on hold right. because of COVID-19. Um, but why is it uh, uh, important to you as a com community partner to be there to support people too? Well, it's all about the kids. Um, I know as an athlete when I was growing up, the experience of being part of a team um, was very important to me. And those are the lifelong friends that friendships that I've, I've acquired over the years and the ones that I still talk to every day. And so uh, we want to be able to be able to support those kids also and give those uh, lifelong experiences to them. Well, they work really hard. They, they do. They work extremely hard and uh, to, to not only um, uh, put a great product out there, but it's also a, a way for those athletes by bringing them live sports coverage that, um, and we also stream that too, mm -hmm. that they can be seen by a broader audience. And that really helps out a great deal. Would you agree in that? Yeah. Yes, I would. Uh, to be able to uh, be able to get that exposure and uh, show the community and show the pride um, that the hard work that these athletes give and be able to do it on TV, uh, it's unbelievable how you all are able to, to give that to them. Um, I, we have many uh, um, individuals in our community that, uh, that they watch all of them religiously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially yes. if it's a, if I had a young lady to call and she was saying that she wanted to make sure that she could watch all of her grandson's football games. Anytime we covered them, she wanted to make sure that she could tune in then. Now, how can individuals get in touch with your business? Well, they can call us on our phone at 270-737-6900, or they can get online and get in touch with us through our website, okay. and that's www.mugabug.com. I was going to say that. Has that been your slogan from the very beginning? The mugabug .com. Yes, that's something my mother came <laughs> up with, uh, Mugabug. That's part of our logo right here, mm -hmm. and it's M-U-G-G-A-B-U-G. -G -G. I was going to say, it's really catchy, and that's one thing everybody can remember really easily. Yes. Yeah. Well, Sean, thank you again for coming in, and also for being one of our longtime sponsors on our live sports coverage. Just know that without your support, we could not do what we do. So we really appreciate your commitment to our local athletes, um, HCEC TV and Brandenburg Telecom's live sports coverage, and to the community that you live in and serve in. Thank well, you for coming in. Thank you for this opportunity. This has been a Hardin County Educational Community Television production. Live local sports are on Brandenburg Channel 1. And all rebroadcasts are on Brandenburg and Comcast Channel 2, Spectrum Communications Channel 184, and on our YouTube site. Also check out our live sporting events on nfhs.com or visit us at harden.k12.ky.us. Hardin County Educational and Community Television, located in Hardin County, Kentucky, a division of Hardin County Schools, airing on Brandenburg, Comcast, Spectrum, and also airing online providing live coverage of local high school sports, covering community and school events, while teaching students along the way. HCEC-TV, the area's leading educational and government access channel, training the next generation of media arts students. Control your home even when you're not there with Brandenburg Telecom's home automation service. Turn lights on and off, lock and unlock doors, and change settings on your thermostat using your smartphone or tablet. Stop worrying whether or not you remember to close the garage door and save money by programming your thermostat to reduce energy used when you're not home. Call Brandenburg Telecom for a free quote and enjoy the convenience of having home automation, phone, TV, and internet service, all from one local company. All right, son, you ready to open your first savings account? Yes, I am. West Point Bank has been growing with our customers for over 30 years. We know what it takes to support them in every stage of their life. You need a bank that you know and trust to help you reach your goals and make your dreams come true. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple.
um, both defenses winning the day at this point. Central Harden Bruins have 113 total yards to 95 for the Bulldogs. So if you you look if you projected that forward, if we had a similar performance in the second half, both teams right around 200 yards of offense, not much production, and uh, both teams are going to have to figure something out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure John is wondering what's going on. I mean, they've been running the ball over the place, close to what is it, 700 yards the first few games <laughs> just from one player. Right. And nothing really big breaking out. I think some really bad uh, plays by the Bruins defense doing some uh, knucklehead stuff and mm. causing some issues to give big breaks to the Bulldogs has caused the, the first score, really. In Absolutely. This there was a uh, the one big play, really, of the night. We've had a 20-yard run by Terry Brooks and a 21-yard catch by Adam Hobbs. A couple other decent throws by Zach Spurrier, but on the, on the John Harden side, it was a 47-yard scramble by Devin Rogers and then two personal fouls that moved them down to the two-yard line. And so Rogers has the one big play. Again, that is over half of the John Harden yardage that they've accumulated. Keandre Strand averaging 265 yards a game right now has 22 yards on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carries for 22 yards. And so, again, both defense really winning the day. But, again, uh, each team has a turnover. John Harden turned the Central Harden turnover into, a, a, score. into a score. And uh, a lot of penalties on both sides. A number of them are personal fouls, um, just some things that just people not keeping their head in, in spots. And um, one kind of questionable call uh, on yeah, uh, that. Andrew Hobbs over there, the uh, the horse collar call was one I'm – I'm not so sure I, I like that, that call very well as he grabbed from the front of the shoulder pad. Um, and then, obviously, on the John Harden side, a couple of penalties. There was the one penalty that was holding on the punt return that backed them up to their own three-yard line. It really gave Central Harden another good field position situation, and they have not been able to take advantage. They've got no points, they, and they have started a, inside. A good field sure. position things and not been able to capitalize on. Um, I think Central may look to running more inside this half. Mm -hmm as they're trying to take it out. So those sweeps aren't hitting like they were. They may be due to the absence of their uh, starting running back. But their inside runs early on look like they could pop some, like, short yardage gains that were, like, three or four yards at a time and keep moving the ball. So, again, Paul Gray here along with Tony Menendez. We are calling this Central Harden-John Harden crosstown rivalry, and we're about ready to start the second half here. I agree with Tony. The Central Harden may go back to trying to pound inside a little bit, see if they can impose their will on this John Harden Bulldog squad. Both teams are going to be looking to find something as, again, Central Harden had the ball starting field position inside the Bulldog 43 times and came away with nothing. Again, the, the, the loss of Case Van Blindberg right now at kicker is, is a bit of an issue. No opportunity for kicking field goal. And even if they score, they may have to go for two, Tony, which could be a big situation. If they score here and can't get the two-pointer, uh, that could be a, a victory for the Bulldogs. Deep kick by Owens. It's taken by Brooks. He's got some he's got space. Some, he's got some open lanes One there. man to beat. Oh, good Great job. He gets it out to the 40. Though. So Terry Brooks takes the ball at his own two-yard line, gets it out to the 40. He's finally corralled. It looked like he was just going to have one man to beat, but he had to slow down to cut. And the rest of the Bulldog coverage team was able to recover and get back to him. So good return from Brooks. I think he's going to take a – no, he's not. I thought he was going to take a short rest on the sideline after that return, but he's on the field. Uh, they'll Brooks start again. Brooks had some good runs in the first half. Brooks did. He, uh, he, he was the leading rusher, four carries for 30 yards for this uh, Bruins squad. Spurrier is going to give – to Thompson straight ahead. They are running straight downhill and trying to get a push. And they had a really good push. The, the line moved about three yards, but that's about how many yards they're going to have. No, it's a four-yard gain there. So to bring up a second down and the six. I think you take that. Just get physical in this game. It's going to be looks like a defensive battle. Try to wear out that John Harden defense the second half. Well, good start to that. We're going to actually give him five yards on the carry. Mason Thompson straight downhill, and that offensive line really got some movement. So I think uh, the uh, Central Harden coaching staff's on the same page with you, Tony. 
four, four defensive, four, three defensive look. And the quarterback's just going to run a straight power. He cuts it back the other way, and he's going to have a six, seven yard gain. First hit by Solomon Bennett, but uh, Spurrier never went down on that carry as he popped out after the whistle. Uh, seven yard gain for Spurrier. And Spurrier, if you remember, Tony, has had several carries where he looked super powerful and was moving the defense, and they couldn't handle it. Yeah, he's had some, he had a couple of breaks, and even on that broken play with the bad snap, he was able to make something big out of it. So first and 10 from the left hash here. They are now on the 48 of John Harden on the John Harden side of the 50. Trips formation to the right, two tight wings. And they're going to look out here, and they're going to throw the deep out to Brooks. It's well overthrown as Spurrier just floated that. He did not shoot that in there like he has on several other throws. So they ran the flood route there, the outside receiver running straight down the field, the two wings, one of them running the short out, the other one running the deep out. They went for the deep out to Brooks. and uh, John Harden had good coverage on it, though. Much better coverage there than they had in the first half on a similar, uh, similar route. Second down and 10 for the Bruins. Again, they are on the John Harden side of the 50. Tight end left, two wings. They're going to throw it again. They're looking he is under oh, pressure. Under a lot of pressure. They're looking to throw a tight end screen, but he's got some space out there turning and running upfield. He's going to pick up maybe 10. I think he's got the, he's first, got the down. first down there. 11 yard run for Zach Spurrier. Now, this is really effective, but I bet the coaches aren't really thrilled with Zach Spurrier taking an awful lot of punishment like this. No. And that was more of a broken play that just got upside out of it. Well, Tony, I think they were setting up a tight end screen there, which is a really good idea to get the ball to Adam Hobbs. And the pressure just got to the quarterback before the screen could develop. Could develop. That's right. It, it's kind of a slow developing kind of a play. And he just had to make a run for it there. He did not have time to set his back foot and try to loop the ball to the tight end. Hobbs is up lead blocking there is what he did. happened. <laughs> yeah, he picked somebody off for him. In motion, there's the jet sweep to Brooks. Brooks trying to turn it up. He's got a few yards there. I think it's the most positive yards off a of sweep they've got. Yeah, so three yards for Brooks on the carry. Second down and seven. He had four carries for 30 yards in the first half. There's three more right there. He did have a carry for of 20 yards on that jet sweep. And the, and the referees are talking to a couple of the offensive linemen there. Number 69, Tyler Caudill, the left tackle. Number 79, Clayton Hockman, also on the left side of the line there. The play has come in. 9.27 and to go in the third quarter and counting. Second down and seven. Bruins are inside the 35-yard line of the Bulldogs. Motion for They're Mason going Thompson going empty. They're going to just have the oh, bad decision, very bad decision. And that is typical of someone who is not uh, used to running the football. They were kicking out yeah. the defensive players. He should have cut that up. He had a lot of space up inside. It looked a little bit trafficy to him and he turned outside and lost a bunch of yards on that so minus two on you don't the want carry to get that lateral movement going just go straight ahead got to get north and south like you've been talking about tony and he did not that time stayed uh, east and west and paid for it in a two-yard loss now third down and nine the ball is uh resting at the 36 yard line of the bulldogs trips formation to the left you can expect maybe a sprint out to the left and that's what they're going to do. They're looking quickly to that flood route again. Oh. Could not hit Terry Brooks, and Spurrier is very frustrated with himself for not getting the ball to Terry Brooks. Brooks was open. He had coverage on him, but two yards but he, he, space. Yeah, he, he has some space. Just overthrew that pass. And what do so you do the, here if you're the Bruins? You well, they're going to bring on the punting. They're going to bring on the punting unit and try to play the field position battle. Hopefully, if you're the Bruin coaching staff, you're going to get a stop and get great field, field position back for another uh, opportunity. 8.20 to go here in the third. And uh, the Bruins uh, series stalled. Again, Spurrier struggling to hit the target at this point. He's running the ball real hard. Looks like Earl Campbell out there. Robbins to punt. It's away. I think it's going to go into – no, it's fielded by number four. And Ooh. he is absolutely smoked at the one-yard line there. That's number that five, was Brandon Lee. a great Lee. special team play right there. Well, that was a uh, mistake. Number four for John Harden, who's uh, – that's Devin Rogers, the quarterback, back deep. He fields it at the two-yard line. You need to let that go bounce into the end zone. Fields it at the two and gets hit immediately by Brandon Lee, number five for the Bruins. And he was absolutely tattooed down there. 
So he may be a, a little uh, bell rung there. They're going to give him the spot where he caught the ball, which is almost the three to start first and ten from the left hash. He was knocked back to about the one-yard line but caught it at the three. Usually you're taught as a punt returner to put your heels at the five and don't go backwards. If the ball's over your head, you let it bounce in the end zone. They are now double tight end wishbone, Tony, like you talked about earlier, deep in their own end. We've got and something going on down there. Is there a timeout called? Timeout called on the field by the Bulldogs. Waddles Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of exit 91. On Interstate 65, call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating. E-Town Exterminating is locally owned, family-run, pest control company that has been serving Harned, Mead, Grayson, and Nelson County in the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, and even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online to mugabug.com. <laughs> All right. That's E-Town Exterminate. 8.13 to go here in the third quarter. 1976, that's when I was born. <laughs> well, that's when they started killing bugs. <laughs> they me. missed one. <laughs> they missed one. <laughs> oh, gosh. 8.13 to go. It's going to be first and 10 from their own three. Motion strand. They're going to give to the big fullback. Yeah, just try Trey to punch Brown. it out of that end zone. They don't want to stay back there. And they did. They got about three, I think, on the carry. So it'll bring up a second and seven from about the six-yard line. Maybe the seven. They're going to mark it at the six. So three-yard gain for Trey Brown to get it off of the goal line. They were deep in their own territory. Now a little more comfortable, 750 and counting. And the Bulldogs, uh, big series here. Bruins See they line up in that wishbone again. Well, that one was kind of a uh, – wing motion type of a set and that's what they're going to again here traditional wing t set to the right that goal line look from the bruins and they're going strand like power off the right side there you're right tony they stuff that in the backfield like the defense just defensive end just cut right through that i believe that was adam hobbs shooting in there again and again that's the off tackle power to strand with a guard pulling to lead it but nothing doing there um and this is a big play coming up for the, the Bruins and the, the Bulldogs. John wants to make some positive yards here, get out of that end zone. Don't want to give the Bruins good field position, and Bruins need to try to lock them down here. Loss of a yard. It'll bring up third down and eight. Double wing formation, tight end right motion strand. It's going to be play action pass. Good coverage downfield. Rodgers looking to run. He's got a little space trying to get to the first down. Can't do it. Can't do it. He'll be about three yards short. He picked up about five. I thought that was going to be like the first half where he eked out and just kind of scrambled a big run out of there, but they were able to get him down before he could do that much damage. Close call. So the uh, the the wing T waggle pass is what they had called. Tight end dragging across, uh, fullback out in the flat, and nobody was open. Devin Rogers had to scramble for it. There's a timeout for the officials, and someone is down. And I think, uh, unfortunately, it might be Adam Hobbs, number 41. So we'll keep an eye on that. Or maybe 72 Brock Burton. I'm not sure right now. We'll get back to you on the number. There. I think it is 72, 72 Brock coach. Burton who's down right now and holding his leg. And they're going to take a look. Hopefully it's a cramp, but uh, may have maybe tending to his knee. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. They've got Brock up. Trainer Jeremy Steakley is helping him off. And uh, Burton is putting weight on that leg. He is getting help. But um, hopefully uh, it's not too serious. But uh, that's going to bring up a fourth down and four, I think. 6.21 to go here. Once they get Brock safely to the sideline, they'll uh, we'll blow the whistle. In. And the uh, official is winding the clock, and the clock starts counting. Is Carter Robinson back deep? 
Let's hope the best for Brock there. Exactly. Jake, he is walking on his nose now, it looks like, over on the sideline in the back. Jake Owens back to kick. Kick is away. It's end over end, and it uh, takes a bounce back it for the Bruins. backwards. So there's that field position you were talking about, Tony. Uh, I think they're going to start with it at the 36 or 37-yard line. There's a flag down. There was a tussle between um, – Terry Brooks uh, blocking, and I can't, it may have been 12 McCroskey. I can't tell, or 10. Not sure who he was locked up with. It was not 12 McCroskey. I believe it was number 10, Lorenz Hollenquest. Is that right? I can't read his number on the back of his jersey. 10 or 16. 16 would be Quentin Clay. I think it's Quentin Clay. Clay is one of their uh, key. Uh, that is 16, Quentin Clay. And uh, that's going to be a personal foul on the uh, Bulldogs there. So I don't know what happened, but I saw them I locked up and, and everybody else as the ball was bouncing around was watching the play, but not those two. <laughs> not those two, they weren't really involved. That's what happens when you have uh, cross town uh, teams playing against each other. They, they know each other, not just uh, from playing ball, but from being in the same neighborhoods and stuff and get a little jaw jocking going on. <laughs> that was testy at the very least. Uh, they were getting after each other pretty good. There was some uh, Extracurriculars, let's call it that. And I think the, uh, I, you know, strange call. Did they call a hold or did they call a personal foul? I think it's personal foul because they're marking it from the spot of the uh, end of the play, not the spot where the foul occurred. Oh, he's calling holding, though. And that, calling that on the kicking team is really weird. During the, maybe during the kick. I, man, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Usually the return team would get called for a hold. All right. First and 10, Central Harden starting at the John Harden 28. Great field position again. The Straight ahead, run. Thompson. There we He's go. He's got a big run up inside. There it is. So Mason Thompson, 53, Solomon Bennett had a crack at him near the line of scrimmage. But Mason Thompson is going to take it inside the 20. They're down to the 18. And that's going to bring up a second down and short, probably about a yard after the nine-yard run by Thompson. they just keep feeding that inside run, Coach. Well, that's what we've been begging for. At least that's what you've been begging for. And uh, that's where their success came in that first series. And now looking to go again. Thompson straight ahead. And he, that, there it is. So, Coach, you've got it. Uh, Coach Tony Menendez <laughs> put him on the sideline and, <laughs> and let him start calling the plays because we've, we've, they've got that figured out. That one would get down just inside the 10-yard line, about an eight-yard gain, I believe. Sorry, that's got to be a 10 uh, Yeah, it was a first down because it was second and one there on the nine yard here, line. But in that 4-4. Straight ahead to Thompson again. He's going to try to cut it back. He's hit close to the hole. Keandre Strand was there to make the play. He spun off and got a few. It looks like he's down to maybe the seven, maybe the six even. And so it's going to bring up a second and goal from the six-yard line. Maybe from the seven, you actually. You could take these little grindy runs right now when you have to, when it's four down territory. They don't have a kicker. Sometimes you got to just take what you can get and just keep punching it in. You know, a 6A football team ought to have a backup kicker, don't you think? Yeah. Somebody in the wings. A little fake read fake. option. Oh, Zach there. Spurrier upended. He's just short of the goal line. They're going to call it a touchdown. A touchdown. There's no way. He landed. He Back like first he about a yard at the yard line. Shy. Oh, yeah. He, he landed at about the one-yard line and rolled into the end zone. Um, that's two that's interesting calls. Momentum. Ah, man, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what, know that, what that is. is. But, um, big play for Zach Spurrier on the seven-yard touchdown run. So Spurrier and Thompson, the two physical presences in the backfield, really got it done on that series. Now let's see what we're gonna, what's going to happen here with the uh, right, They're going for two. Game. They're going to go to the gate, and Thompson straight ahead. He's going to push in, and, and the it. Bruins get the two-point two conversion. And so with 4.05 to go here in the third quarter, the Bruins eight, Bulldogs seven. So in that case, we were wondering what would happen on that uh, extra point situation, and it could go for you or against you. And in that case, the Bruins were able to get the points. They just got to, well, at least with the, with the first one scored, if John scores a touchdown against an extra point, they at least they're in a position that they can tie up the game. Absolutely. So 
Yes, if they do score a touchdown, yes, six points will tie it and then see what happens from there. That could get get pretty exciting having to go for two to win the game instead of just kicking it through. So um, big series for the uh, the, uh, Bruins and – Coach Tony Menendez making the call. They had to get the ball in between the tackles and downhill. And Mason Thompson super effective. And then on the touchdown run there, that's uh, Zach Spurrier. He's been super physical running the football tonight as well. He's a big, strong kid. And, uh, boy, he's he's rising to that challenge big time, Tony. Tucker Walters, the Let's kicker. see how John answers this, uh, this score. Ooh. He's a little pooch. Oh, through the legs. Fielded right on the sideline That could have been really bad for John there. That was pretty close. So 24, Bruce Mills, the uh, wide receiver on the second line, is able to finally corral that. Through the, it went through the legs of the front line. And, well, they're not uh, and it was touched. It. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, at that point it's just a bounce here, a bounce there, and it goes one way or the other. But Mills makes a good play to field it. I would think on special teams they'll make an adjustment next run and maybe go to a hands team up front just in case. It would make it a lot like of sense. It looks like they're, they're going to be doing that every time they kick the ball. 4.05 to go. Bulldogs start from their own 35-yard line. Shotgun, Devin Rogers is going to keep the ball and try to get outside. Nothing there. 64, Walters misses, but there's LaMarion Blunt to make the big play. LaMarion Blunt making the tackle as Devin Rogers tried to cut back and That'll be a loss of five yards. It'll bring up second down and 15. So I believe that's his first sack of the season. It is. LaMarion Blunt is, um, he's played a lot of special teams. He's played some outside linebacker. And um, I think with Trayvon Williams out of the lineup, he's had to step in. He's made a couple of big plays. Very athletic, very tall and rangy kid. And uh, he swallowed Rodgers up very easily as Rodgers tried to cut back. 324 and counting here in the third quarter. You would think the big tight end would get involved right now. Well, they've only thrown it twice. Harden. And so maybe here. And, again, we're going to sprint out right because Keandre Strand's way wide in his setup as a uh, running back. So there's the sprint out. Nolan Goodman is out there shadowing. He's going to dive and make the tackle. But it's a six-yard gain for Devin Rogers. It'll bring up third and nine. Third down and nine. And, again, uh, they are <laughs> they are tipping off what they're doing pretty specifically there. I don't know if you're noticing that, Tony, but anytime they want to sprint out, they take the running back strand and move him out behind the tackle, which is not where he would normally set up if they were going to run the football. And he's trying to get outside and seal the edge. Yep. So that, was that uh, pressure coming from that defensive line? Absolutely. Hard and they they've stopped that by by making that happen by putting Rodgers on the run a little more. That was the outside linebacker, Goodman, trying to pressure him there. He's going to look on third and nine downfield. Rodgers is going to scramble. Now he's going to hit Strand. Oh, Oh. Strand looked up. Easton Link was there. But if you get Strand the ball in open field, it could be six points. Absolutely. So he he won. That was a missed opportunity right there by John. I think he had it. Keandre Strand, you can see his head turned to look upfield before he had the football. Just a, a classic mistake there. So fourth down and nine on the incomplete pass from Rodgers to Strand. And um, the punting unit has come onto the field. Jake Owens, 85, will do the punting duty. The incomplete pass will stop the clock. 2-11 here in the third quarter. Tony, just like we thought, we have a very close ball game here. The penalties are making a big deal. Special teams. These close games, uh, that's what will be the difference. Almost blocked. Almost blocked. Caught by Robinson. It. Breaks one tackle. Breaks it. Puts oh, it on the ground. Oh, he picked it back up. He I got think it. Robinson got on it. So close. the idea of the turnover almost struck again. So Carter Robinson made a good return, but uh, the ball was punched loose as he was going to the ground. We're on the. Looks like we're dead on the fifty, coach. Left hash. The Bruins will start on the fifty. That's the worst field position they've had all night. One time they had to field a kick and start on their own 20. Everything else has been uh, on the other side of the 50, I think. The Central came pretty close to blocking that kick. Yeah, I believe that was Noah Payton, uh, the sophomore, number 35, who actually in the first game of the year carried the ball uh, a few times. Uh, Noah almost had that one. And uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that in the special teams as well. 
Ball is given, I think that's Caden Ferguson. He's going to break it outside, and there's space. There's Caden space Ferguson way. is being chased by Lee. Isaiah Lee pushes him out of bounds at the 33-yard line, a 17-yard carry for Caden Ferguson. And that's one of the first big pop outside runs that they've had. Well, great blocking on the outside. Number four, the wide receiver for Central Harden is Seth Williams. And Seth was out here and sealed off the cornerback really well, and that allowed them to get out on the edge. Tight end right. Brooks at the wing to the right. Ferguson still in the backfield. Spurrier's going to give it up inside. A lot, lot of movement there. Big hole. Wow, that was a big hole. Eight-yard carry for Ferguson. And that'll bring up second this and is, two. This is where this uh, physical game's going to be coming into play. If they can keep getting a hard push on that offensive line, driving back the defensive line there in the center, it's going to be a hard time for John. That's uh, that's what just happened on that play is the movement of the on the line. There was about a three- or four-yard push up front. And um, Ferguson had easy sledding downhill for about seven yards. He's, he ended up getting nine, second and one now, 118 in the third quarter. Going to go again. There's Ferguson. Nice cut up inside. Big movement Big again. Movement. And down he goes at about the 13. Another 11-yard gain. Now we're getting little chunks. And it's it's definitely the battles being won up front right now. That uh, Bruin offensive line, Hobbs, Orton, Caudill, Hockman, and Sarah are dominating that front right now. And uh, Bryce and Brown... Uh, a little winded, I think, on that defensive front for John Harden. It looks like they're bringing somebody up. Going again. Ferguson's got it. Is There's a great push. I was watching. yards. It was about four or five out of that. Number 79, Hockman, man, he had a great push on that, uh, on that run. Ferguson will pick up another six, five or six yards there. I'm going to give him five on that carry, and it's going to bring up a second down and five as they are spotting that at just inside the eight-yard line. It looks like they're going to wind this down probably to the next quarter. They're yeah, going to get a playoff 11 here. seconds to go. They're set up like they're going to go ahead and run the play here in the third. They're going to take the snap. And Spurrier, Spurrier off the left side. Touchdown, Bruin. Takes it on the inside and takes it out. So uh, kind of like the little read option play there, and everything collapsed on the on the uh, offensive left side. He was around the edge in a hurry. Well, they look like they're going to run inside, and they've been pounding that inside run, which opens up that outside space. Absolutely. So here we are, the end of the third quarter, but uh, they will go ahead here and, and run this um, – Muddle huddle, swinging gate kind of a thing here. And they're going to go to the quarterback this time. He's going to throw it to Robinson, and the two-point conversion is good. So they executed that beautifully. And um, so two-point conversion to Carter Robinson, and it's now a 16-7 to ball game, which is, um, by my math, I'm not great at math, but that's nine points. That's a two-score game a two just score by game getting just those two-point conversions. They've opened this thing up. Maybe they're going to start doing that all the time. <laughs> Well, they tried to run that a couple weeks ago against Butler and uh, failed miserably, Tony. It looked really bad. Uh, uh, they had, honestly, what happened on that play right there was fantastic, showed good growth by Spurrier because in that Butler game when they ran that, he just kept running into a pile of people. Right there he realized that he had, there were too many. Uh, it's a numbers game when you're running yeah. that, and there were too many guys inside, but Robinson kind of uncovered on the outside. Easy throw on the slant. So, uh, 16 to 7, and we will start the fourth quarter now. And the Bruins now with a two, uh, well, really a two score advantage here at 16 to 7. Bulldogs looks are going like to have the, uh, the front line of the special teams is different. Uh, they've put a few more skill kids up front uh, as they understand that Tucker Walters is just going to be rolling the ball. Walters this time bouncing, it bounces off a of Bulldog, but uh, great job there. I believe, recovering it. I believe 12, uh, Kevin McCroskey, he, he did come up with the ball. Great hands on that play. That's why you have the hands team out there. So they'll start over, I believe, start with the ball on their own 44-yard line and a good field position. Now Bruin uh, kind of try to answer on defense, but let's see what the, the Bulldogs do. So you made the call with Bruins offensively needing to get in between the tackles. What about the – excuse me, the Bruins need to do it. What about the Bulldogs? What should they do on the offensive side? They've got the speed. If they going. can get it outside, I think they can get some yardage. But 
they still haven't really pushed hard in the pass game at all. So it's going to be fullback trap straight ahead, and that was eaten alive. Tucker Walters and 52 Easton Link all over Trey Brown. That's about a two-yard carry. Second down and eight, I'm going to call it. And Brown has five carries on the game. For They're going to have to get a little yards. bit of sense of urgency, Coach, with down three scores. Yeah, two, they need two scores to get, uh, yeah, to, to take a lead here, to get back in it. You're right, 11-26 and counting, and they're uh, relying heavily on the running game. It, it could be tough. True wing T right formation. That Oh, they're trying to run the belly play, but Keandre Strand was not there on the second option on the belly. Easton nothing. Link there to stuff Devin Rogers, and so a big mistake in the offense by Keandre Strand. They were going to run the belly. We saw them running that in the pregame. I think 32 got in there first. Is that on Central 32? Caden Ferguson, who uh, was running the football in the last series. Caden Ferguson makes uh, makes the play there. So it's going to be a four-yard loss for Rodgers. Good play by Caden Ferguson. And, uh, again, a broken play by the John Harden offense. This is not where they needed to be at third down and 12. Uh, they are probably in a passing situation, maybe in a four-down situation. Wing T to the right. They're going to go belly this time straight ahead. Second man through. And Strand was stuffed. Big collision between he and Easton Link. They're Link to took the worst of that. Couldn't get nothing out of that. They didn't. Easton Link did a good job filling the hole. He got knocked to the ground, but the, his buddies were all there to take care of uh, finishing off Strand. Well, that's a two-yard gain. It's going to bring up fourth down and ten. And the punting unit's coming on. Ten minutes and counting. I guess if you punt and get a stop, they, then, they uh, cannot got allow time. the Bruins to score again here. They have to get a. Yeah, if they're down three scores, I'd say that that uh, that would do it. So the defense is going to have to step up and make plays here. Jake Owens back in punt formation. Ooh. No, close. Peyton almost got it again, and uh, Robinson's going to let it go. Good bounce for Good the bounce Bulldogs. Right there. Down to the 17-yard line, so they'll start deep in their own territory. Uh, that was number two, Andrew Carson, downing the ball, and the Bruins deep in their own territory. This is the worst field position the Bruins have had all game. It really is. 9.26 to go, and uh, the Bulldogs are in need of a stop. They're somehow going to have to shore up the uh, inside against the inside run. They were breaking down looked like a linebacker on the blitz the last couple of downs, but the Bruins yeah. were able to pick it up and pop out some big yardage up there in the middle when he came in. Big number 75, Chase Litton and Devontae Yates, 52 on the inside at tackle. are going to have to do a really good job here. And it looks like they're going to get a stop as they tried to run Mason Thompson straight ahead. That's, I believe, 33, Freddie Arnold Didn't making the tackle. get a yard out of that? Uh, they're going to give him one. Second down and nine for the Bruins. And again, do or die time for the for the Bulldogs needing a stop to get the football back. And the two-point conversions are the difference in the ball game right now. They're making a big difference. Shotgun, Spurrier waiting for the snap. He's going to give to Thompson straight ahead. Thompson kind of picking at the and hole in like there. He's a good push there at the end. Blowing straight ahead. John is going to have to shut that down. They cannot let them keep running that up the gut like that and getting those positive yards. So first down yardage, a 10-yard gain for Mason Thompson. Didn't look like it was going to be much, but the push Rich. was massive as this uh, Central Harden Bruin offensive line is winning the battle up front. Now number 71 checking in Braxton Atkinson for the, uh, for the Bulldogs. In the middle of that line, Trey Brown and uh, Carson, Andrew Carson at the defensive end spots. They've gone to a <laughs> Mason Thompson just a picking his way. Step there and, and they're, they're just going to push that. the pile. Another great push right Man. there at the end of the play. You just, they're just grinding at those yards after the hit there at the end. 11 yards on that carry, another first down. They're going to move the chains again. He's just kind of picking his way, not running to a specific spot or hole, kind of picking his way to find the hole. And when he does, he's just downhill and running as hard as he can. 
I'm wanting to see what they're doing as far as the uh, blocking scheme up front. It's tight end right double wing formation, and I would guess we'll see it again. I'm going to watch the interior here. Oh, just man on man. man they're on just man. going straight at. There's no, there's no trap. There's no uh, zone just blocking. Getting, it's just, just down a hard hill. push. They yes. are absolutely six yard gain for Thompson on that one. Thompson's going to come out, and Ferguson will check in after four hard runs in a row for Thompson. They'll go to Ferguson, and the clock is running. That's three minutes so far uh, on this possession. Down to seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Let's say Des Carter Robinson's way off sides now. There you go. He's going to get back on sides. But look how tight John Harden's defense is right now. Ferguson off right tackle. He's going to get six and pick up the first down. So Caden Ferguson's having a great night with the football in his hands. And they're just picking them apart right now, just taking a little bit of time and then just picking up a little bit extra there at the end. So clock continues to run. First down and 10. The ball is now on the Bulldog side of the 50 on the 49-yard line. They're staying in the same formation. They're probably going to keep running the same place. Look how tight John Harden's safeties are. They're trying to get their safeties into the box. This time they're going to throw the football. Hang on to it, Spurrier. Wow. That could have been a, mm, a bad situation. Disaster. Almost trying to make more than what he needed to make. Just take the sack. It's well, okay. Yeah. You're up. I understand what they're doing there. They fake the reverse, and we're going to try to throw a uh, post route to Carter Robinson. And with the safeties lined up at five yards, great idea. They just couldn't keep the uh, Bulldogs out of the backfield and out of uh, the quarterback's lap. Zach Spurrier had immediate pressure. It's kind of hard, too, on play action. You've got your back to the line of scrimmage. You don't even see the rush until you turn around to throw it, and sometimes they're standing right in front of you. That's, uh, that's disconcerting. Well, a loss of four, and so the drive that was moving so well, they may have outsmarted themselves a little bit there, even though they it was – They got a little too trickster. They did. Uh, whistle. There's a flag down. Is that encroachment on the defense? Wow. Four-yard loss for Spurrier on the sack. And they're going to call encroachment on the Bulldogs. So it's second and 14, but that'll put the Bruins back at second and nine. And now a manageable situation back over the 50. That was a big mistake from the Bulldogs. 5.33 to go here. When it's this late in the game, you can't be doing that kind of stuff. you got to be paying attention. you got to be smart. Every Thompson day back in, Tony. They're going to give it to him straight ahead. He's finding room over the right side. He's going to be tackled by Devin Rogers, but another six-yard gain for Thompson. It'll bring yeah, up about a third tackle three. That one. Again, I think he's looking up inside, and then he's just finding the he's yeah, finding the gap. I think they're just going man straight up on the blocking scheme, and then they're just seeing where the gap is coming or where the push is coming, and he's just kind of sliding to that push. Something that uh, the old Steelers running back Franco Harris used to do. He kind of looked slow getting to the line of scrimmage, and once he picked a hole, he committed explode through exactly so thompson kind of looks like he's doing the same thing so another timeout and this is going to be a Central big timeout this is an hcc tv student production of division of hardin county school special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors brandenburg telecom physical therapy associates waddell's auto and scrap metal recycling blue ribbon renovations of mark harris company and e-town exterminating tune in weekly for all local hcc tv programs airing on brandenburg telecom and comcast cables channel 2 and Spectrum Channel 184, all HCEC TV programs on the HCEC TV YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel today to get your local community sports and events. Again, a special thanks to our HCEC TV crew, the students, Andrew Walker, Jonathan Bland, Jeremy Miller, Kyler Barkley, and Eliana Holt. And then to our fearless leader in the truck, Gina Ryan. 4.57 to go in the ball game, Tony, and with uh, the, the heavy run offense of both teams this thing is going super fast man this thing is ending in a hurry here in the second half yeah i think uh again like we've said all game this is probably four down territory for the bruins they're looking at can we get a few yards we get the first down near be great if we at least get a few yards and then punch another few yards to get another first down just keep draining that clock draining that clock and try to get out of here they could run the whole thing out in the, on this drive if they can get a couple more first downs so Two timeouts left for the Bulldogs, and they'll be uh, wanting to burn them soon. They're in a specifically a 4-3 look. Spurrier in the shotgun, Thompson to his right, double wing formation. And they're going to run off tackle. Spurrier 
He's going to pick up about three. It's going to bring up a fourth and one as Thompson was the lead blocker. Spurrier gets three. Fourth and one, what do you do, Tony? Kick it and put them deep or go ahead and go for it and try to run this thing out right now. I would just go for it. <laughs> I agree. If you can get a first down here, you could just maybe kill this game right now. So fourth and one, and their trying defense to put the game been playing away. So strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and John needs two scores here. Four twenty six and counting. Fourth and one. Oh, 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 oh they caught him. Ah, oh. uh, they went with the long count, with the hard count, and uh, John bit. And I wouldn't be surprised if in that timeout that was what was called. Mm. If we get a few yards and we're close, then we'll very next play freeze them. go right up there, long count it. Yeah. So good play by Coach Mattingly yes. and, and Coach Lynch calling the plays. Uh, Spurrier did a good job drawing that uh, John defense off sides. Um, they're going to go into more of a uh, double tight end. Now it's a single tight end look still, but they're going to run it straight downhill. Thompson putting his head down and just bowling forward for about six. A little stutter step's working for him tonight. <laughs> his last three carries have been six yards. I think if you go six, 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 all the way down the field, I think it's going to work. I think you score a touchdown at the end of that, Coach. I think you would eventually, <laughs> wouldn't you? We'll find out. They may, not, they may have run out of time before that happens here. 358 and counting as the Bruins continue this long drive. I have not been charting the number of plays on the drive, but we've got to be at least to about play eight or nine on the drive. Again, tight end right, double wing. Mason Thompson over the left side. He's going to pick up another first down, and so that's a another six-yard gain, I'm going to call it. And I will say that um, it doesn't appear that the Bulldogs have anything that they can do to, to put a stop to this. I'd love to see them maybe try to pinch the front and – bring an outside backer off the edge to see if they can catch him in the backfield at some point here. They're in that 4-3 look with two safeties. The two safeties are way up trying to make a play. But Thompson's just going mean, to find the space. Up there on the blitz there up the middle, but it didn't matter, did it? No, they're picking him up. They're picking him up, and Thompson has the ability to just move away from that gap wherever that blitz is coming from. So... Um, just to be interesting, I'm going to call that again a seven and not six. It'll bring up a second down and three. The ball is now inside the Bulldog 20 at about the 18-yard line, 243 and counting. It doesn't appear they'll run the clock out completely, but it really looks like the Bruins have this thing well in hand at this point. And he Ferguson. just broke that open. I mean, he did. Bounced off a tackler and just kept on going. He's just dragging those defenders for those extra couple yards. It looks like every time he runs the ball now. And that was Ferguson that time. They started at the 18. He's down to the 5. That'll be a 13-yard carry for Caden Ferguson. We got and, a timeout by John here. And this is last-ditch effort timeout for the, uh, for the Bulldogs. This is probably their last opportunity here. Uh, again, down two scores with 223. It's uh, kind of a Hail Mary at this point. No, really not much of a chance, but they've, uh, they've got to create a turnover or get the stop here. Uh, they've only got one timeout left, Tony. I'd say. Bruins are just going to run the ball and try in, to get out of here. <laughs> that's right. They score, they score. I think they just want to. I'd say it's in the books right off. about here. Yeah, 223 left. Uh, there's not much that the Bulldogs. They have not yet at this point in the game completed a pass, so the uh, playing from behind situation doesn't seem to be the best situation for this Bulldog offense. I know they can throw it. They've got some people who can catch the ball and run, and, and Devin Rogers is not a bad thrower. They just have not I was surprised they didn't come out throwing some that first possession after the Bruins scored, that yeah. second score, a sense of urgency to try to score through the air, air there in that last series. Again, they have not put much up on the board here in the second half. I've really only got them for about uh, about 10 yards in the second half. Spurrier is going to fake it and carry it himself. 
Touchdown, Bruins. So Zach Spurrier with his third touchdown of the night. They uh, call his number from the five-yard line. And Spurrier has been a big focus of this offense in the second half running the football. He had six carries in the first half for 11 yards, but very active here in the second half carrying the football. Um, so they've got to go for two. I mean, it's uh, it seems kind of bad. Twenty-two to seven with two minutes to go. Like you're running up the score, but they don't have a kicker. So they don't have a kicker. Have they're a gonna choice. try to throw the ball in the end zone, but nothing doing. Spurrier breaks the tackle. Now he's gonna throw it, and he'll get the two-point conversion. So Spurrier showing his strength, uh, getting away from the uh, tackle. It was Devontae. Yeah, I thought he was, he was able to shrug that off and just get a little toss over the top for the two-point conversion again. I don't know if that was Devonte Young. I, I'm not. sure. He shrugged off, the shrug, and threw the ball for the two-point conversion. So 2:18 to go. It's 24 to seven. Bruins leading the Bulldogs, and and uh, the Bruins have reeled off 24 straight points. They were down seven nothing coming into the second half, and uh, they took the advice of one Antonio Menendez <laughs> and ran the ball straight ahead. And uh, you know we wondered which front would win the day. Yes. And obviously the Central Hard Bruins offensive and defensive lines have won this football game. I think you were right when you were calling about uh, not being able to get that sweep off, the jet sweep, because um, they just lacking that speed that they had before. But I felt like their offensive line was just yeah. so big and strong. Yeah. You just got to play to your strength. Really the only speed guy they've got on the field now is Terry Brooks. And, and uh, he got a couple decent runs off in the first half. But, you know, it, there was no surprise after the first couple, and they uh, the, the Bulldogs were shutting that down and, and, and hitting it for a loss of yardage, so uh, putting them putting the Bruins behind the chain. So here's Tucker Walters. He'll put this one on the ground as well. Takes an interesting hop, and number 16 for the Bulldogs is there to make the play. Quentin Clay fields it and just gets down on it. They'll have the ball on their own 38-yard line to start this series with 2.18 to go. I guess one of the questions for the Bruins going forward, can they keep being productive with this kind of kick game going forward? Yeah, well. And relying on the two-point conversion. I don't know how injured Case Van Blyenberg is. Um, good friends of his parents and him himself. They're in my church small group, and uh, I need to have a little chit-chat with Ron and Heather and see how Case is doing. That'll make a big difference. Give to Harrell uh, off the left side on the jet sweep. He'll pick up two. Yeah, I don't know what they'll do. They've got Henderson County um, at home next week. And we both know how good Henderson County, County has yeah. always been. Big school. Uh, they'll have a lot of big people. There. I don't think they'll push Henderson County around like they pushed around John Harden here in the second half. They're going to have to play a lot better, I think, uh, against Henderson to get a win. That'll be a tough one for them. And John Harden's got the big tilt with North Harden and Radcliffe. Hobbs giving chase, can't get to him. Rogers on the run. Tucker Walters trying to get there. Oh, my goodness, big stick. And that's Mason Thompson running the ball, making tackles. And Devin Rogers is taking a couple big hits tonight. Yeah, he's, he's taking some shots this game. I thought for sure he was going to throw that downfield there for a minute. Yeah. So Adam Hobbs put a lot of pressure on him. Andrew Hobbs is there as well. He obviously, uh, Devin Rogers was too quick for them to get a hold of him in that case, but uh, Tucker Walters was closing in on him from one side, and Mason Thompson lowered the boom. 102 and counting third down and about six yards to go. Two receivers to the left. Keandre Strand in the backfield. The give to Keandre, he's going to turn it upfield. Breaks two tackles, hit by Elmore, hit by Ferguson. He's still driving still forward. He's dragging Elmore and Ferguson with him. He first down out of that. He did. There's a nice eight-yard run by Keandre Strand. He kind of did that one on his own, didn't he? Forty-one seconds to go. And oh, no. on the ground. Caden Ferguson so down, holding his leg. And that and, could just uh, be a cramp. He's, he's been he, he's riding. working a lot. He's writhing a little more than a cramp. Uh, that is totally a shame as the uh, training crew will come out to check out Caden Ferguson's had a phenomenal game offensively and defensively. And after the loss of Trayvon Williams, you know, when you see people like Brock Burton and Caden Ferguson go down, it's, it's a big concern for this Bruin um, 
Bruin football team going forward. So next week, again, they've got Henderson County. Henderson, it's kind of interesting. We're seeing a lot of wing tee football in high school uh, these days. Uh, Henderson County was always a wing tee base. They threw the ball a lot out of the shotgun because they've had a couple really good quarterbacks. But that wing tee base... Oh, man, that's good news as he's uh, – Oh, he's grabbing the back uh, of his thigh there. Or hamstring. Oh, goodness gracious, I don't know. Hamstring. Or his glute. <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, nothing pulled. Maybe just a uh, cramp, as you mentioned. He's, he's done a lot of work this game. He, he has uh, put in a lot of work carrying the football and uh, playing really good defense at outside linebacker. Uh, first and ten for the uh, Bulldogs. They're on the Bruin 49-yard line, 41 seconds, and, and it is counting. The clock is winding. 24-7 to seven Bruins. Keandre Strand around the right side, running over the corner. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get out of bounds. Okay. He was about a yard from in. it, and there's a flag thrown. Now, Terry Brooks made the tackle. Strand knocked him flat on his back on about a seven-yard gain, but the flag is uh, thrown. And uh, I think they're going to call that on John Harden. Now Nolan Goodman is limping for the Bruins. Maybe the Bruins ought to just get their starters off the field. and get. Uh, I know you don't want to give up anything late like this, but uh, now Nolan Goodman holding the back of his leg, holding his hamstring, <coughs> and struggling to get off the field. So, um, well, it's been a fast game, but it's been a, it's been a hard fought game really has. I mean, just, you know, you, you look at both these teams, three pass attempts for the uh, Bulldogs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pass attempts for the uh, Bruins. The Bruins have called a lot more pass plays, but, uh, you know, some of those turned into Zach Spurrier scrambles and runs. Obviously, the same is true of the Bulldogs as Devin Rogers has pulled the ball down to run it on numerous occasions, trying to make something out of nothing there. But unfortunately for Keandre Strain, he makes a great run and then um, – I think he had something to say to the uh, to Terry Brooks, who he had just run over, but uh, doesn't do any good to run somebody over if you uh, go 15 yards back in the other direction. So it'll bring up about a second down and clock's running again. 18, and there's only 27 seconds to go here. So we're in the last play or two at most. Two receivers to each side. Rogers ready for the snap. They're going to throw a middle screen. This time it's successful. They get it to Harrell. Harrell's going to pick up about 17 yards, almost gets to the first down marker, five seconds. John's and this thing calling timeout. John is going to call a timeout with 4.7 seconds here, which is kind of an interesting decision, but uh, they're going to go ahead and try to get a score. Uh, again, they had, uh, I believe, second down and 18. They picked up 17, maybe 16. They're going to have a third down and two now with 4.7 seconds to go here. They, uh, next week, are going to go play uh, North Harden. And North Harden, as we know, has been the powerhouse in the area for several years. They've lost a lot. But they have shown signs uh, against a tough DeSales squad beating up on DeSales. Now, they had a rough time against Manuel and against uh, South Warren. But those are those are tough teams. Two of Kentucky's <laughs> elite teams. and uh, That's I'd, not an easy starting schedule for the season right there. Exactly. Three tough teams. When you're that good, it's hard to schedule anybody. Nobody wants to play uh, and get their heads kicked in early in the season especially. So John Harden will go to North Harden next week. As I said, Central Harden will host uh, Henderson County, and the Central Harden faithful are celebrating this one. It'll be Devin Rogers in shotgun formation to take one more shot at it. He's going to give it to Keandre Strand off the right side, and Strand and uh, Brooks will hook up again, and there will be a tackle there made. Strand will run for about eight yards on the last play, but Central Harden Bruins will walk out of John Harden out of Bulldog Stadium with a 24-7 win. They will go to 4-0 on the season, and the Bulldogs will drop to 2-2, two and two, and I'm sure the Bulldogs will be looking forward to getting into their district schedule. One more big rivalry game. This is a big rivalry game, but, oh, there's nothing like oh, John nothing Harden. Like John and North, yeah. North. That is probably the premier rivalry in the area. Those people – are not happy with each other anytime <laughs> they hook up. There's a little bit of anger and, and ire that, uh, that are loosed on one another. So, in fact, I saw someone walking around tonight, a Central Harden fan, wearing a blue North Harden shirt that said Beat John on it. <laughs> those, uh, those 
the, the, the John Harden folks will be wearing their Beat North shirts, and the North Harden folks will be wearing their Beat John shirts uh, all next week, and they'll be fired up. And Coach Preston will have a lot of work to do to get back and see what they can improve upon to go play a really tough North Harden team. I'm sure Kurt, Coach Manley is pretty happy with this win, uh, with the injuries that happened, to be able yeah. to come out here and still, like, find other ways to make things happen is, is a positive thing for the Bruins after after this like, kind of rough week they've had. And I'm sure he's pretty disappointed in the uh, first half mistakes that really cost them But they really cleaned it up the second half. Absolutely. Cleaned it up in the second half. I'm looking out on the field right now and seeing Case Van Blyenberg and Trayvon Williams, the two injured players, um, both on crutches there. So there are some questions to be answered for the Bruins uh, with the injury issues. There are some questions to be answered for the Bulldogs, especially defensively trying to figure out how are they going to stop the inside run as they go to uh, Radcliffe to play Because North they don't Harden. want to get that exploited down the line. So any final thoughts on the game tonight, Tony? Um, I think the Bulldogs need to look for, like you said, something to help support that against that inside run. You don't want that to become a habit for teams to start seeing that. I mean, you know, every week the team following is going to watch that game film and see what worked. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if North Star's giving, doing some, like, heavy inside runs come this next game against the John Harden Bulldogs. So, again, uh, this is Paul Gray alongside Tony Menendez. And, again, Bruins final score of 24, John Harden Bulldogs 7. This has been, again, Paul Gray and Tony Menendez from John Harden High School. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.